all right <laughs> let's see if it's uh, audible now can you guys hear us uh, no uh, elk hand it's it's not it doesn't happen always it's that I have changed the mic today so I'll have to recalibrate everything um, Let's just quickly yeah, let's just can, quickly see. I, 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 is it is it fine now? I can hear you fine, man. But um, yeah, we need to make sure the YouTube guys and everyone across the entire world can hear you right now. Well. All right, so it looks like everybody is fine. We have got a ten out of ten from TGZ Ferrier Death, so that's all we need. Wow, that sounds a bit like that fashion um, fashion show last night that FC Bob put on. Oh yeah, citizens. <laughs> that was ten out of ten. All right, actually, that that's that's. Uh, <laughs> You know what? I'm gonna change my the title of that video right now to fashion show. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a brilliant fashion show. For anyone that's watching, yeah, Russian, be curious what we're talking Russian about. Russian fashion um, show. That's that that suits the game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just check out the live stream from last night. It was the uh, best of three, two v two. Um, me and Inverse Bob and Joker. And yeah, Bob was basically dead. So he sent all of his citizens through my my base. Uh, you know, single file doing a fashion show for, for all the viewers at home. Yeah, it, yeah it's, it was... it's the episode 14. It's called Russian Fashion Show by FC Bob. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> it, it was a funny game. Oh. <laughs> that was good. That was good. But, um, all right, so what, what do you think? Should we should we get into a quick summary of the players here? I mean, everyone knows who these guys are. Oh, but, yeah. Let, let's, uh, let's, let's just breeze through it. So we, in for Wally, we've got Coin, Surge, Zen Mechanics, Stain, and Prolace. All of these are top of the class players. No need to introduce these guys. You probably see them in the lobby all the time now. And one good thing about uh, for Wally is that they have not lost a single game throughout the tournament. Yeah, I think um, for Wally have basically been undefeated the entire way and I mean aside from a couple of what looked like you know reasonably close games with I think that AS game was probably the closest on legs mm -hmm. but that wasn't even necessarily that close it was still like you know obviously there was a huge advantage um, for Fall Valley even in that match they've just been dominant in, in most of the games that I must admit AS, AS games I probably saw you know there was potential there that AS could have um, perhaps done some things differently and, and still want to win there but yeah, for Bali, it looked really, really good. Um, obviously, Coin, Surge, Zen, and Dane, and Proways. Like, look at that roster. That's that's basically an all-star, you know, um, all-star kind of lineup there. So, yeah, needless to say, they're, they're justifying this, their um, top four seed at the moment. Um, and, you know, they go into this match against PLA, you know, on paper as perhaps the favourites here. But honestly, man, PLA, let's talk about PLA. So, PLA. Again, we've been over it before, but they're they're a bit of a wild card because they're in obviously the best Chinese plan. They've got so many good players, but they don't normally play as much on the, um, the global service as the other guys do. So, how do you think PLA is going to um, line up here? PLA, so PLA is going to be, I would say PLA has it tough against Forwali, but we have seen PLA play some really nice games as well. I, I, I would say this is one going to be one of those, the closest, closely matched games in this tournament so far. Uh, because even though PLA has, is, a, is one of the teams that has lost a game against AZ2, but remember AZ2 was a strong team to begin with. So it's no, it's, it's no shame to lose against AZ2 one game. And the, the best part about PLA is their versatility. Just look at how many players they have and what all combinations they can come up with. So, uh, compared to Forwali, if you have watched Forwali's games, you may be expecting some kind of play style by them. But for PLA, it's going to be completely ex unexpected because they've got TNO, Linky, Penguin, TNT, Timeless, Mouse. Uh, some of these players haven't even shown up yet for a tournament. So, you, you, you just don't know what you're going to look at right now when you, when you, see, that, so you see this team play. Yeah, I agree. I, I honestly um, don't know who who they're going to throw out here as their lineup. So, and you know they've got eight players on the roster, so they could throw out you know three different teams pretty much um, without any crossover. So yeah, it's going to be cool to see what happens here. Um, no idea who they're going to throw out. But, you know, Timeless, Mouse, Angelo, TNO, Linky. Um, they're probably the, the best five. I'm not sure. I don't know a lot about TNT. I don't think I've seen him play too much, but um, I. I I'd be excited to see, you know, if they throw out one of these guys like TNT or 
or monkey or penguin, um, just to kind of mix things up a bit. Um, yeah, it would be kind of kind of interesting just to make it make it a bit different. But yeah, look, this is going to be a good game. You know, it's, it's that classic, you know, Asia versus Europe, uh, East versus West. You could argue um, mm -hmm. playing for pride here, and yeah, can't wait to see what happens. Oh yeah, definitely. Just give me two minutes. I'm going to set up something right now. Uh, just hold on, okay? I'll be muting uh, myself for some some time. Uh, Cron, you're still yeah. on. While your team's just getting these things sorted out, um, we do have a benchmark to hit before we can begin the cast. So this is not an ordinary game. This is a semi-finals of Nomadium. And that means it's something special. And that means we need to get a decent audience tuning in, watching this, because this is when the best stuff happens here. So guys, at the moment, we've got 15 viewers online. But this is my, my ask to all of you. If you can please help us out, all we need you to do is go into YouTube where you're watching this right now. It could be on your phone, it could be on your computer. Most likely your computer because we're all Rise of Nations players. But for those guys out there with the, you know, listening to, listening to it on your mobile phone, that's cool too. Go into your app, copy the link. All I ask is go in and paste it on Steam, paste it to everyone in your friends list that plays Ron, Paste it to everyone in your friends list that doesn't play wrong. Paste it on Facebook. Whatever, whatever you need to do, just get the word out there because there's so many people that want to watch this right now that just don't know about it. So if we can get to 20 viewers, that's when we can start this match. And I know you all want to see the match start. So please copy the link, paste it into someone's uh, you know Steam chat or Facebook or WhatsApp or Discord or any of those kind of mediums. And um, the sooner you do it, the faster we'll get this game started for you. Guys, I'm just checking the viewership count at the moment. We're still only on 15, so I just wanted to double check if you guys are out there helping out here. We just need you to copy the link, paste it in a few different Steam chats, and just get the word out there because that's all we're waiting on to start here. So any assistance is much, much appreciated. I just saw that L Sims has said on the chat, Karan, I'm not part of any community, not any Steam group or Discord. I'm just like with Dave and Boo. Wow, I feel so sorry for you right now, Sims. That's a uh, tough crowd to be stuck with. Just kidding. Alright guys, I'm back. <laughs> Just before we start, I want to I want to tell you all that for the stream, we do uh, I've put a notification bar on the top right. They'll tell you any current activities, any donations, and I have kept a donation goal for fifty dollars. Let's see if we can raise that. Uh, it's no problem if we cannot, but if we can, <laughs> that'll be amazing. Let's see if we can work it out. And so far, I would like to thank YTSAV Yitzhov, if that's how you pronounce. He has donated seven dollars to the stream. Uh, in the past, so thanks a lot. Uh, it uh, always encourages me to keep it going and keep continuing 
to put out more content for the stream. So yeah, if if anybody wants to help, we are greatly appreciated. Uh, Kron, are we ready to begin? Absolutely, we're ready to begin. Um, yeah, I think we've got. Let's just look at the. As long as everyone's done their bit, they've shared the link. I know we've got 16 watching right now, and apparently there's lots of people that were in the game earlier. So when they finish, I'm sure they'll also jump on. Um, but yeah, let's um, let's get stuck into it. We've got a best of five here, um, so there's plenty of run action to get started and, and get straight into. So um, what do you think, Jatin? Should we load up the first match? Oh yeah, let's go. So I am loading the first game. I am at the zero second, uh, two seconds mark. Second mark. All right. I'm also at the two second mark. And okay. Well, so we're ready. Three, more. two, one. Let's go. Do this. And the first thing that points out, it is a four v four. Oh wow. yeah. Wow. And uh, really, I appreciate both for Wally and PLA for giving us a four v four. It's no, it's no joke to arrange eight players to be at the same time and uh, punctually be able to start the game so yeah uh, that's that's amazing we got tnt tno timeless and mouse uh, i think it's going to be tnt's first game in the series am i right yeah that's the first time i've seen tnt um show up in a match uh, as far as i know um so there's no no linky here on the roster and um no who else isn't, isn't showing up here angelo i guess is another person they've played with but um, yeah, TNT is definitely going to be an X factor here. I'm sure the fact that he's in PLA, he's probably a really good player. But um, yeah, absolutely no idea uh, what level he's at. And um, yeah, let's, it'll be interesting to see how he goes. Yeah, on this side, we've got everybody from Forvali except Proles. I guess we will see, we may see Proles in future games. These guys have got five games, so they can easily rotate. That's not going to be a problem. Yeah, I feel like um, this is a really, really strong almost a dream team here for Full Valley. I mean, I have a lot of respect for Dane. And I mean, we already talked about Surge, Stan and Point. We know how good they are. But Danius is one of those players that I just find him to be a really, really smart player. And he's definitely underrated by the community, I feel. And so that's a really, really strong core. And I mean, this is on Aussie Outback, by the way. Isn't oh, yeah. yeah, Aussie Outback, yep. Yeah. Yep, so Aussie Outback, what a great, match uh, what a great map what a great country too australia is a nice place to uh, to live mm -hmm. and um <laughs> yeah, aside from, no doubt no doubt <laughs> yeah. but aside from that um you know it, it it gives awesome rise of nations games i find it's really fascinating there's so much going on and there's so much economy that i feel like it's like a turbocharged rise of nations match so yeah can't wait to uh to see what happens and um should we go through the the nations quickly oh yeah definitely whoa wait uh, a second uh, we just interrupting. We've got a six dollar donation from Gamer Boy seventy. Uh, so we are twelve percent already on our on our target of fifty dollars. Thanks a lot, man. That means a lot to me. All right, and then that's awesome. that brings us back to our uh, selecting the nations. Um, let let's uh, let's look at the nations. So if you were let's say if you were to be in one of these teams, uh, based on the nations, which team would you <laughs> rather be on? All right, so we got Germans, British, Maya, and Japanese versus Russians, Inca, Aztecs, and Dutch. And I mean, of those sets of teams, the one that stands out to me, I think I'd probably want the full Valley team here. Germans, British, and Japanese are all really, really strong nations, especially British on this map because of the ability to fish and get up to 125 food really, really quickly. Um, whereas, you know, Russians, Inca, Aztecs, Dutch, I feel like probably, you know, Russians and Dutch aren't quite as good as as the other ones, oh. but I mean, still, it's not, it's not a here nor there, it's a 4v4, there's so many players, I wouldn't say that one team has a massive advantage or anything, but I give a slight edge to Paul Valley here. Oh maybe. yeah, definitely, I mean, I would say um, Russians, Dutch, and Maya are going to be the weaker civilizations out of all of these, so, uh, but again, Russians, they can be quite tricky in this map, I don't, I, I, it's not very much expected to see people going to spot just because of so much fish is available you would rather try to get all that wealth using senator and get your uh, commerce cap to the max you can so in in such a scenario russians can be quite powerful because of all that because of <laughs> all that um, attrition that they provide 
And well, uh, Mandrew SF, which who I believe is TNO, he says Dutch is awesome. Actually, Dutch, Dutch might not be bad for this map, particularly if the Dutch player can show, show some really nice raids on water. That that will be amazing too. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, if you look at, I actually like the way that this map's kind of getting set up at the moment because PLA have made a pretty um, pretty aggressive build here with Aztecs building right in the center. And this is a big storyline on this map of Aussie Outback, is that in 4v4s and 3v3s, generally speaking, it comes down to the rare resource being mountains. And if one team can border push and steal all the mountains from the other team, then basically, once it gets to age three and age four, you know, you run out of metal, you can't build your heavy infantry, you can't build as much heavy cavalry, you can't build as much uh, siege as well. And you pretty much got to, the team that doesn't have the mountains has to basically purchase all their metal through, um, you know, purchasing it from the marketplace. So I like the setup here. Timeless is built fairly aggressively, not a lot of wood by the looks of it. It's a little bit risky with his wood, but if they can kind of hold, they're going to have more metal in the long run. Oh yeah, and they've got, they've got, so let's quickly uh, just look over the rare resources. They've got Pappy, Horses, Sugar, Silk, Furs, Salt, Wine, Diamonds. That's, that's amazing rare resources. I would, I would, <laughs> I would love to have such rare resources in a game. Yeah, this is looking like some really good rares. I mean, Aussie Outback has so many rares that there's generally, you know, both teams are always going to have something good. I mean, it looks like the, you know, Four Valley guys have Silk, and Silk is a really important one to, to have on this map. Oh yeah, both um, of these guys have, both of them have Silk, Pappy, and Salt. So there's no particular advantage over there. Yeah, and there's and there's Sugar on the map as well, which is seems like it's about halfway between. Oh no, it's actually no, sorry, that's the uh, the PLA guys have Sugar as well. So yeah, look, plenty of good rares. It's going to be hard to keep track of exactly who's got. Who's got what here? Because 4v4s, this is the first 4v4 we've cast, and I suspect the action's going to heat up very, very shortly. I mean, you can see that it looks like Blue is starting to raid already and um, has gone middle one here at the top of the map, uh, TNO, and oh, yeah. just cla classic TNO style here. TNO is such an aggressive player, um, and yeah, I love to see him mix it up like this. Oh, he's a little late. He could have prevented uh, Surge's uh, barracks to uh, be completed. But again, I want to point out something here. TNT has decided to put uh, Civic 1 first uh, before Commerce. So that helped him to get Timeless's Woodcutter Camp secured. And that's amazing. In team game, you want to help your ally as much as possible. So if, if TNT did not put that city here, you can already see that Dane was trying to hog that Woodcutter Camp. But now he cannot. So a really good teamwork there. Meanwhile, here Timeless is going on raids. He's Aztec, so it suits him perfectly. Yeah, I mean we saw in in that game. It looks like Timeless uh, has got Aztecs uh, for the second time. He in the last tournament match he was also Aztecs, and that was when he destroyed Fireman, I believe. So uh, we've already seen that he plays really, really well as Aztecs. And last time he was Aztecs, he was very aggressive. Uh, he pulled militia and. This is probably not as good of a map, especially against British here, because British are quite a good defensive nation here with the, uh, the archers. But I wouldn't be surprised if he pulls off something crazy a little bit later into this match. Yeah, if I if I remember correctly, Timeless was Aztecs in that game against AZ2, right? And that was Aussie Outback as well. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Yeah, and so, he, he did play really well, so I want to see if he can uh, pull that off again. Now, something to notice here, Forwali has got... Uh, silver on the sides, in, uh, close to Ber Berlin or on the on the shore, next close to Berlin, yeah. and they don't know about it, but uh, the PLA team does. So yeah, wow. So that's going to be changing now. Another thing I want to point out here is that for Wali team has got two super fast civilizations, while um, none of the PLA teams have a super fast civilizations. I, I, when I say super fast, I mean Germans and Japanese, which can age up much faster than any other civilization. So this is going to be, initially, if if, if this game doesn't go for too long, if they start attacking early, now they, uh, this German and Japanese combo is going to be helpful. But if this game draws out for too long, then again, um, Dutch, Inca, and uh, Russians, the SX, they, they are going to overpower. Or they're going to be yeah, at, least, I mean at least balance it, balance it out. 
That's it. I mean, at the moment, in the early game, I definitely give Fort Valley the better nations. But, I mean, yeah, you, as you rightly pointed out, I mean, Inca is a great nation in the late game, especially if TNT can get a Colossus. That's uh, that's really OP. But, I mean, yeah, Inca's always great in the late game. Dutch is probably the definition of the best nation in the Gunpowder Age and, you know, Enlightenment Age, if it gets that far. And then, you know, we've talked about this before, but um, we've cast many games with Aztecs, and Aztecs just get stronger and stronger and stronger. I mean, the later in the ages they get, once you get the gunpowder, just the amount of plunder you get is ridiculous. So, I guess the storyline here is that um, as this game progresses, if it stabilizes into a long, drawn-out macro game, mm -hmm. I feel like PLA is going to slowly get stronger and stronger here. Oh, yeah. Now, Green does not have a good economy. I, I mean, his water camp has been strangled completely by uh, Dane's border push. So... Uh, Timeless, I mean, I was talking about Timeless actually, yeah. Timeless is uh, struggling to find a new woodcutter camp, uh, so that's going to uh, slow him down severely. And here they've got uh, British and Germans. Germans are fast, so in case they want to, in case they want to um, rush early, Germans are right there. On other side, British, you know, British are slow in the beginning, but they have a super strong late game thanks to their uh, extra 25% uh, commerce cap. So this is, is going to be very a strong game here. Like Inca and Aztecs, both of the best civilizations from PLA right now against Germans and British. On the other side, they've got Dutch and Russians, which are not the best. So I would, I would say it's more up to green and light blue here to finish the game. The other side yeah. may not be able to overpower that much. No, I agree. And I mean, another thing to worth pointing out is that Surge is doing a great job at the moment behind the scenes raiding with uh, these light ships and he's got citrus as well so that's something that's really frustrating to play against is when you constantly got um, your fish under attack getting raided and your food income and your gold income is always under pressure um, is to try and you know focus on your match while also dealing with that at the same time. Oh yeah and Mao's just asked in the comments if, you, if the other side can kill and I understand I mean he's again uh, He's against Maya and Japanese, and Japanese alone are so overpowered on this map. So I don't blame him if he if he just wants to defend and let the other side kill. Yeah, I think that's probably a fair strategy too. I mean, you look at their nations. So they got Russians, and um, yeah, and, and Dutch up against Japs. So the longer they can hold the game and make it go longer, you know, into gunpowder age, for example. Um, the better their chances, but you know, if they try and fight Japanese early on, or if they tried to rush, it just wouldn't work. Um, they'd probably lose their army and um, yeah, we quickly counterattack. So yeah, I like that kind of thinking from Master. Yeah, and Timeless, just look at Timeless's score. He he did suffer a lot because of that woodcutter camp, and he he's just getting the science. Meanwhile, uh, Yellow is going for the uh, it's already classical age, almost classical age. Look at. Uh, Dane here, he's got second science and seven, second civic already. Same for um, Zen mechanics here, second science, seven, second civic. Surge just stopped at second science. Yeah, I mean, that's the power of that Pappy and um, Silk. I mean, you can see that, you, you know, Pappy and Silk are like the dream team when it comes to Aussie Outback. They're so good to get, you know, you get your fish up, you get your, your science, you get your commerce too. And this is really setting up, um, you know, Dane and Zen to be in really, really strong positions as this game gets into this middle phase where, you know, they're going to probably age to, um, to age three fairly quickly given that everything is kind of turbocharged at the moment from a technology point of view. Oh, yeah. And uh, here from PLA, only TNO has gone for an extra research, Commerce 2. Everybody else has just decided to go with whatever they absolutely need and quickly move on to the classical age. Here uh, and I want to also point out how Zen Mechanics has placed his city in the front. That's amazing positioning. So since Zen Mechanics is in front, he has Maya. He has a better defense. It's going to give them a lot more time to survive an attack. And look at that those trees right next to Excocha or Zakocha. That's going to help them. I mean, that Zakocha city is in a perfect spot to be defended. This uh, surge city Nara is something they want to protect. In in case I were the our TNO or her mouse, I would be looking to attack Nara. That some seems to be unguarded and uh, an easy target. And the Wonder Game yeah, has already started here. Um, Colossus from Timeless, who's the Aztecs player. I would 
I, I, I don't I don't know I would expect the income player to get a close it just makes more sense but if Timeless wants to boom, well, that's not a bad idea either. If with that Colossus, he's going to have that extra population. And you know what? We have seen what Aztecs can do with extra population. They're absolute disaster. <laughs> they can wreak havoc on their opponents. Oh, I mean, seriously, Aztecs with Colossus, it's almost like um, you build up that death ball of units. And once you get so big, um, it's just you cannot be stopped because you try and attack them. They basically feed off your army. Um, your army is food to them. So, I mean, if, if yeah, there's a way that Timeless can kind of settle down here, these guys can boom up. Um, I think PLA is probably in the best spot if they just build castles, sit back, and just try and get economies of 200, um, 200 eco each, and just try and age up as quickly as they can. Because, I mean, at the moment, you look at you look at the kind of state of state of affairs here. You've got Zen building hanging gardens. Um, you know, you've got Surge doing a great job raiding the uh, the wood in the back. Uh, sorry, the, the fish in the background. And you've also got uh, a lot of early raids there on the PLA guys. I feel like Four Valley have the upper hand at the moment because they basically uh, put you know green and light blue's economy back um, quite significantly with some really good raids early in the match, and they're always going to be playing catch up from now on. Oh yeah, and and the knowledge game is working uh, fine for now. I guess TNT should be getting an. He, TNT already has uh, what three cities I I think he should be making more uh, universities he just put down another university because he's got plenty of wealth that's a lot of wealth already and timeless is I think he forgot to start putting uh, scholars in his university look at that he, he has the least amount of knowledge income out of all the players yeah I think timeless has definitely um, got the weakest economy I mean, he was the guy that kind of took a risk at the beginning. And, you know, everything in this game, it's like Newton's law. Everything has an equal and opposite reaction. And, I mean, he decided to walk into the center there and get that map control. And, I mean, you can see that they've got plenty of mines now. But the problem is he's got no wood. I mean, he had no wood in the early game. And, you know, that wood was under pressure. So, ironically, it's been great for his team. But Timeless has basically taken one for the team and sacrificed his own economy by making that move in the beginning. And this is starting to play out now. Uh, actually, yeah, he he uh, also doesn't have anywhere close to 150 economy. He's being attacked by uh, by a coin and um, Dane both. It may not be really good for him. I don't I don't see any army from light blue right now. Yeah, it looks like light blue is um he has he has got some ships uh, which he's been building to try and defend against Surge's raids. Um, so, yeah, perhaps that's part of it. But you can see that this pressure started to come in now on um, on Green City here. And, yeah, really big um, big army from Coin. Oh, yeah, and looks like that city is going to be taken. Uh, wow. That city, city does go down taken. there. Yeah, just... Um, and honestly, I just feel like this is a reflection of that early kind of... that wood situation. Unfortunately for Timeless and, and for TNT, just economically they're a bit behind there, they just couldn't keep up. And you look at the economies of, of Dane, I mean, God, Dane's out of control here, he's got 200 food, 200 wood coming in. Oh yeah, and that's and, the power of Germans. Oh man, uh, like, really, really well played by both Dane and Coin here. And I guess a mouse is coming to help, that's obviously the wise decision, You, if he doesn't help right now, it's GG. Yeah, they need to push back here, and I mean, having three armies against two hopefully should give them a bit of an edge here, trying to uh, push Coin and Danius back. But at the same time, you know, even just having to come down here, you can see that Surge is going in for an attack himself, and Mouse oh, yeah. with a good, a good castle there. So, so oh Mouse yeah, is in a good position. I mean, I have to give it to Mouse as well. Look at that castle, uh, that Russian. So th this is uh, another point where Russians help you. If, uh, so yeah. Uh, Serge will have to go back. There is no way he he can attack that at this point. So, well, Russians are not that bad after all. Yeah, and wow, TNT actually has a huge army now. Um, I don't know where he got all those archers from, but it seems like they just popped out of nowhere. But yeah, that looks like PLA guys are doing well here with that pushback. And yeah, Danius and uh, and Coin are needing to retreat here for the for the time being. Oh yeah, but then this did hurt. Uh, timeless a, a lot. S just look at the e just look at his economy. It's a complete disaster. 
Yeah, exactly right. And I can see TNO is building pyramids here. Um, so in the background, you know, PMA is doing everything right. And it looks like Surge is starting to push forward here with his own uh, Japanese army. Uh, oh, yeah. Just he is. He is. He, he. And he's got three catapults good enough to take that city down. But Blue is also there. Blue is there to help. I don't... Uh, purple has got his army also, but uh, I, I don't think Purple... Actually, Purple is attacking from the other side, but meanwhile, I guess L Blue will be able to save White from a Surge's attack. Meanwhile, L Light Blue needs to support Green until Green is back on his feet. It's it's really bad for Green right now. I just don't want to be him at this point. Everybody else in the game is has an awesome economy, but him. Yeah, it's tough. There's just um, not a lot of trees for him to get. He's, you know, he's um, he hasn't got a lot of mines either. So he's kind of that player that was the odd one out as far as being um, first dibs on getting, you know, the mines up and getting the woodcutter camps. So yeah, it's, it's a tough spot for them. I feel like you know, unless they can try and figure out a really nice attack here, um, it looks like Danius with his huge economy and coin are just going to slowly take the city. Oh yeah, and. Uh, I don't think Mouse can help this time. He will. Mouse will have to stay there, because Serge is ready with his army. He can attack any time. Actually, he is going for it. Yep. And I I don't blame him. If if this site loses, what's the what's the point of this whole game? He he has to help help him. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they need to kind of hold this somehow. And I think you know coming down trying to get a triple off against the two armies is. Is probably their best chance here, but yeah, it's, it's, it's looking pretty tough, tough spot right now for, for Timeless and PLA. Oh yeah. And Surge is not making any move. Surge has is, is on the population limit. Meanwhile, uh, not to forget, Zen Mechanics is already. He has all the researches needed for Gunpowder Age. Probably he's the only one who has uh, everything required for Gunpowder. Yeah, 247 knowledge income coming in from Zen. I mean, that's absolutely insane. And yeah, it's not going to take too long. It looks like you can see in the chat actually. Uh, Search just said, Zen, we must kill. He's getting tripled. And uh, Zen's replied, okay. <laughs> so um, I suspect Zen is going to come out with a vengeance. I mean, Zen's been playing fairly, um, you know, he's been booming up for most of this match so far by the looks of it, you know, doing a bit of raiding, uh, sending his army at the top. But, you know, once he hits Gunpowder, that's probably going to be another storyline in this game. Because he's going to hit it way before anyone else will. Oh, yeah. And I want to say Zen is, I think Zen is the boomer of Forwali team. If you if you remember that game against AS, when Zen went Science 4 in, classi in Classical Age. Oh, man. Absolutely insane. I've never seen someone crazy enough to do that. Except, obviously, Zen is crazy enough to pull it off. And I mean, I know that was Great Lakes, but still, I've, I've literally never seen someone go Science 4 for H2 before in my life. So I think Zen has definitely got that tag. I mean, Zen is such a good boomer. Uh, that's kind of how I view him when I play against him. He, he just always hits the ages much faster than anyone else. He's the kind of guy that hits Industrial Age when you're still in you know, Medieval Age. So <laughs> He's um, <at> Industrial Age. <laughs> he's got tanks rolling through, and you've got Pike when trying to, trying to hit his tanks, and it's just not working out for you. Boy. So. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, that's looking like that's where he's heading. I mean, with that Hanging Gardens and, um, yeah, pretty decent knowledge income coming in. Uh, yeah, this is this is going to be interesting once he hits age 4. Oh, yeah, and something very ex uh, uh, strange from Dane, he's got extra commerce instead of anything else. So he is aiming for a 250 economy right now. We don't see that every day. No, that's, um, that is pretty crazy, hey? I mean, these guys have such good economies, and I mean, the biggest thing for PLA right now, which concerns me for their chances, and you know, if you're a full barley fan, which would make you pretty happy, is that Aztec's capital has the Colossus there, and there's a massive army that's marching towards it, and I mean, it's... Whoa. Whoa, just look just at that, just look, just look at that mouse, uh, mouse ambush and destroyed Surge's siege oh, yeah, yeah. wagon. Oh my god, that was oh. an awesome move, he, he just forced... I will have to give brilliant. It to TNO and Mouse. What a brilliant game! Wow, brilliant play there by um, by both TNO and Mouse. That was 
that was epic and you know worthy of a semi-final like this uh, that took out a huge chunk of Surgeon's army there and really looks like it gave PLA you know an even footing in this top side of the map oh yeah I, I I mean if if green was doing fine I would say this game would have been super interesting uh, and a lot more uh, balanced but right now it just looks like the game is in slight uh, a, a lot in favor of Forwali. Uh, Zen mechanics is going gunpowder rage and mouse even after all those battles he is still keeping up with his economy look at that he is going to be gunpowder rage soon too probably one of the first in his team or maybe not yeah, well, wow, this... uh, uh, TNO is also going to be aging soon I mean yeah TNO and mouse are playing like uh, unbelievably well at the moment and it's really going to come down to I guess if they can somehow you know help out their teammates at the bottom here um, because it looks like you know as we said before yellow and orange are both economically superior at the moment to to green and, and light blue but at the same time green and light blue do have wonders they've got colossus they've got terracotta army as well i didn't actually see that go up but um terracotta army what do you think of that decision there well terracotta army is a wonder i mean a wonderful wonder in uh, gunpowder age when those uh, light infantry turn into archbishops yeah, it, 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 it's an amazing sight. At this point, I, I won't say those Javeliniers are not that useful. Maybe, actually, against British, the Javeliniers are not that bad. Mouse, Mouse said, GG, I think they'll lose their side. But uh, TNO is aging as well. TNO says, just keep playing. And I, 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 I like that spirit. Meanwhile, in the chat, uh, Dave just said that he he also he did Science Four in Ancient Age once, and I feel I remember that game. He was Dutch, and it was four versus four on, uh, I, I guess on Great Lakes. And yeah, and that's that's something you should, <laughs> you, you you want to think twice before doing. But if it works out, then you're you're in good luck. Tiano is going to lose that city. What do you think? Yeah, it look, looks like um, that city's probably going to go down. That's a really nice... Uh, was that an ambush right there? Oh yeah, that was an ambush. Um, great job great job by uh, Serge here, but he's still going to be doubled because um, I, I, yeah. Zen decided to go from the other side instead of here. I do not understand why he would do that. I actually, I think that was a bit of a bonder there by Serge. I mean, I'm not sure exactly what he was trying to achieve. But he surely would have thought that there was a chance that they'd have armies on both sides which could come in. And it looks like he's essentially lost his entire army there for really, really no game. Uh, yeah, probably a bit of a, uh, bit of a blunder there by Surge. Oh yeah, and, and that can change the game completely because now Surge's army has been decimated. So it just leaves uh, Zen here. And I guess... I, I guess here uh, Tieno has a big enough army that he can take care of Zen mechanics. Meanwhile, um, there is a battle going between TNT and Dane, and TNT is taking care of that really nice. He just saved the city, and he is pushing back Dane as well. And Mouse is back here again to help Timeless. Oh man, I I feel so bad for him. I. I mean, I, I know he, he's been thinking, damn it, if I just could focus on Surge instead of helping my ally all the time. But at the same time, it's required. He, he can't help it. Man, this is, this is the first time in the match where I've thought, you know what? PLA can actually win this game. Oh, yeah, because they can. <laughs> somehow they've, they've absolutely come from what I thought was, you know, definitely a, on the back foot. I mean, they, the fish were under pressure, they had really bad economies. And then you look at where they are now, they've got um, pretty much like way more wonders than, than Paul Valley do. And, you know, I guess, yeah, Surge losing that army has definitely put them a little bit weaker on the military side. And they're starting to stabilize here with, you know, those nations like we talked about. We've got Aztecs, we've got Inca, and we've got Dutch. And they're all really good nations in the late game of this, of this, um, this kind of setup. Oh, yeah. And just something to know, I mean, Zen Mechanics has got... Uh, hanging gardens and despite that uh, TNO has a better knowledge income than him in fact TNO has got an extra uh, military which gives him the operations upgrade and he that upgrade will allow him to take out this army from Zen even though this army is slightly bigger but 
I would have to say really nice play by Tiano. Uh, and meanwhile, Zen Mechanics is not thinking of ending the game right now. If you go Science 4 and President, that just tells the enemy that you are not trying to get finish this as soon as possible. Your idea for this game is to uh, draw it out till Enlightenment Age. Yeah, exactly. And you look at, um, you know, TNO versus Zen. I mean, Zen was booming so hard, but TNO's actually got a, you know, a better economy because the Dutch, the power of the Dutch, I guess, he's got so much extra income coming in and he's got a higher um, set of commerce there. So, or is that from the wonders? Um, he's got the pyramids and the, and the Forbidden City. So that's that's definitely helping him out there. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and, yes. and, and TNT just committed suicide with his army. What is he doing there? He just oh, no. he just ran into Dane's army for th that had oh man I feel so bad TNT TNT was doing amazing there but yeah he, I mean if he loses that city then I mean Green is already on back foot on the other side and with TNT on back foot this was GG for this side and look at that mouse and TNO they are fighting it out so well. Yeah, there's a huge battle here between Mouse and, um, and TNO and Zen and, and Surge. And wow, I mean, it's looking like PLA's starting to get the upper hand here. They've got, they've got more units. And uh, yeah, it looks like a relatively good engagement here. Um, TNO and Mouse definitely playing his MVPs here for, for PLA. Yeah, and Dane just said, I think I can win here. And yeah, clearly, TN with, uh, after that suicide from TNO, there is, uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see how TNO and Timeless are going to survive this. And Mouse is back again here. If, if you check this, Mouse is trying to come back and... Alright, yeah, Ma that's Mouse's life throughout this game. Just <laughs> survive and help the other side. I mean, Mouse is just one of those guys. He's just such a nice bloke. And, um, you know, he'll come in and, and save the day. Uh, I feel like he's, like, kind of the Superman of PLA right now because... <laughs> He's coming down, you know, helping his teammates out, going back, killing an army, coming back again. Um, so yeah, he's. I think they're definitely going to need him to be nice, the nice guy, one more time oh, here, yeah. and just try and help balance out this bottom side of the map. And Glasgow is going to be captured by the Russians. Yeah, it looks like that Glasgow has gone down there. So um, yeah, I mean that's going to hurt the economy here. Or um, for for yellow. So. Oh uh, yeah, and it's, it's just again pointing out, Zen Mechanics uh, did the printing press upgrade in the university, and he has got an amazing uh, knowledge income right now. So that was the payoff. He decided to go for science before military. So because of that, he did lose that fight against TNO, but on 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 he got the better part of the deal by getting a, a better knowledge income and now he's going to be enlightenment age first and look at just look at on the other side tnt managed to take back his city oh my god i i can't really I'll, i'm telling you if these guys could have won this game if they just played it out normally or if they were a little bit more lucky yeah i mean this is this is crazy i mean to be honest this is like the biggest game and so far, it's been a game of, there have been a few blunders here. I mean, Surge made a bit of a blunder before. You've got TNT who just sacrificed his entire army. Um, and, you know, you've got so many wonders, but so much back and forth, like from a, from a big picture game here. Um, this is absolutely insane. This is exactly what we signed up for. And um, I oh, can't wait to see how this fight's oh going to play oh, out. Shit, no, I... Oh shit, Mouse is going to be double there. Do you see it? Mouse is going to be double yeah, between, yeah. sandwiched between yellow and red. And green is hiding behind. That's not the... Yeah. That's not the right thing to do there. Looks like a good a good pullback there by Mouse. Mouse is very aware of his his you know surroundings, and he was able to kind of yank his army back behind that that tower. Oh, so in the right time, he survived. Yeah, he survived that one. That was um, definitely a dangerous situation. Exactly, it could be one double like that, which decides this entire match because this is so finely balanced right now. You've got Zen, who's probably got the long term advantage from a knowledge income point of view. But I feel like PLA's got an advantage from a nations and from a wonder point of view because they've got pyramids, they got colossus, they've got you know forbidden city, terracotta army. They're all really good wonders that really add up in the long term. Oh yeah, and look at that. Uh, Tieno j just said that he can win here. 
Now, uh, looking at his library researches, if, if he he has a bigger army, easily a bigger army than uh, Zen Mechanics, and he can push back Zen Mechanics if he just uh, speeds up. But Zen Mechanics will be uh, on his way to Enlightened Age, I think, within the next five minutes. Meanwhile, Surge here may be losing all of his army again. What do you think there? Yeah, that's Surge's got a bigger army, but I mean, Mouse is probably got a bigger one here. And I mean, yeah, you look at how this is playing out. You know, Mouse has got a, a decent engagement here, but Surge has a lot of heavy knights. And I mean, with the Monarch and with the uh, the armor upgrades, he's got that plus eight attack, um, or plus eight armor, sorry, and um, plus two attack for his cavalry. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who wins here. Yeah, and Surge is. Uh, search, search, search is going to uh, search might be winning uh, this battle, but on the other side, um, yet yeah, Tieno is just rushing into uh, f uh, Zen Mechanics capital. Do you see that? I mean, not the capital, uh, just the city. Yeah, you know, he's pushing forward here, and it looks like Zen is trying to do what he can to hold, but he's got a lot of uh, hallucinations, uh, <laughs> the decoys there. <laughs> hallucinations. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of the wrong game, StarCraft. No, this is not Starcraft, this is Rise of Nations, yeah. But um, yeah, a lot of those were fake units, so I wonder if that helped kind of push TNO back there, if he had known that, whether he would have gone in for the kill or whether he would have retreated. I, I would also like to point out that that city from Zen Mechanics is not a good target. They should be attacking this Nara here, because then they don't have to worry about uh, fighting that Mayan uh, city fire. And that city is just too much in the corner. It's already so difficult to fight this. And very soon, it was, oh my god, just look at Zen Mechanics. He's not even try He's not even thinking of ending this game in Enlightenment Age. He just went for Science 5. Absolutely insane. This guy, um, this guy needs to be checked into a psych ward because seeing him go Science 5 there before Age 5, man, this is awesome. This is exactly what we want to see in these kind of matches. A um, bit risky though, I mean, I must admit, he's got a big engagement here with TNO and this is the t kind of time where it would come in handy to have those Enlightenment Age units. Oh yeah, just, of, um, just, just, I'm going to interrupt you and uh, get your attention to Timeless's capital. This is, yeah. this is something I would never expect from, from a, in a, in a semi-final game. He never deleted his Senate. How could he forget to delete his Senate? Yeah, you can see he's starting to siege it with that catapult, so he's trying to make up for his mistake there. But uh, can he get it uh, destroyed and raised and, and rebuilt behind uh, quick enough? That's the question. Because that castle is really helping, but that castle is about to go down by the looks of it. Unless, uh, you know, Mouse can maybe come to the rescue again. Oh, yeah. And Tr Timeless is just reaching uh, gunpowder age. He, he's just reached gunpowder age. That means now he'll have access to Archbishops. And Essex just gets super strong in gunpowder. I mean, it just get, I, I don't know how. But uh, maybe because of the gun uh, archbishops, probably, and they just got, get a hundred percent extra power boost. And yes, Serge is doing well. He is going to take that city as well, uh, forcing Tieno to come and help. Yeah, I mean this is this is good. I mean Serge has finally got the upper hand now over um, over Mouse by the looks of it, as far as armies go. But Tieno has the upper hand over Zen. Look at, at Tieno's score. PLA actually exceeded, uh, they just surpassed for Wali in terms of score. Can you believe that? Oh man, this is from, insane. This is, yeah, this they, is when Dutch becomes powerful, right? They actually came back from a point of no return. Yeah, but look at Soja's army here. He's got a heap of heavy knights. Oh, so yeah. many and, heavy power. And Mouse is supposed to be helping him. Mouse should be going there. That's not good for, yeah, that's not good. Yeah, I mean, they need to try and double surge here because he has so many horses, but it's yeah. like they are starting to double now and, you know, they're starting to get some, some traction, but wow, where, why is Surge Army's, Surge's army not dying right now? That's, that's what I'm curious about. They just seem to be destroying oh. everyone that they come up against. Oh, because he's got the Monarch and he's got so many, so all those knights are getting the extra two uh, armor. Yeah, no, they've got plus eight armor at the moment, that's... And, and look at that, Timeless and TNO are, it looks like they are coming back in the game as well. 
And this is this is like a, a, a response to anybody who said that the game was over in Classical Age. Just look at that. These guys are actually giving for a run for their money. This is insane, man. This is what happens when you you got an unstoppable force versus an immovable object right now. I mean, God, these guys are playing off their pants at the moment. And you can see that, you know, TNT and, um, and Timeless are, are doing really, really well to hang in there. And I mean, we've seen so many comebacks. We've seen, you know, Surge has definitely come back here. We've got Mouse had a huge moment. TNO's got the, the best score in the entire match. So everyone is just... Everyone knows how important TN, it is. is going to age before before Zen mechanics. This is crazy. Wow, that's that's the power of the Dutch right there, and he's playing Dutch as well as I've ever seen it before. We I mean, this... yeah, Tiano and Timeless have got their city back, and I don't I don't think uh, Yellow is not close to aging. Uh, actually, um, Dane is close to aging, and TN, TNT is not. So uh, the green and light blue got a kill here very fast. Zen Mechanics just said we have to we have to win here because I think he realizes that the Inca Aztecs combo is is getting their advantage, and they are overpowering their side. And meanwhile, oh, yeah, it's, uh, some raids it's like raids coming from TNT. He just t uh, probably took out that. A whole woodcutter camp through his dragoon. There's Man, so really much nice. going on in this game. Oh, there is. And I mean, you look at the ocean too, there's heaps and heaps of ships um, from Mouse just protecting their waters. So there's all these things going on in the background here. This is absolutely insane, man. I don't know what the hell's going on, but Holy I'm just shit. thankful to yep. be here right now watching this. Just look, look at Green's army. He has a lot of units inside the city and even everything that's outside is so big. Oh my god, Green is going to take this now. That Colossus is finally paying off. He has got the upper hand. And while he's not nowhere close to aging, he he can easily overpower that British army. Oh man, oh man. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. Uh, Tiano and Mouse are both Enlightenment age, while nobody for Forwali is an Enlightenment yet. And how the hell did they get to Enlightenment Age? They didn't have Hanging Gardens, but they managed to get there first. But, yeah, this is definitely the time to strike when you've got that technology advantage. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend they wait around too much longer. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. And, and I mean, it, it, is it partially Zen Mechanics' fault? Because Zen Mechanics went for an extra commerce, an extra science. So if this game draws out to uh, Industrial Age, no doubt he is going, I mean, no doubt... For, uh, Zen Mechanics going to take take this for for Wally, but at this point, uh, the way blue and white are attacking Surge, Surge who is in, who might be aging to uh, Enlightenment date, but not in time. I guess Zen Mechanics mistake is is going to be a big mistake for Zen Mechanics at this point. Green and light blue are both doubling. Uh, green, I mean they're both attacking green and orange. But look at that massive army from green. That's just huge. Oh man! Holy yeah, shit! Yes, is it I... going? Is it going to be that first game where Forwali lose? Uh, Forwali loses. Mouse. And... I'm not gonna call it. I'm definitely not gonna call it. This has been too many back and forths, but Holy this is definitely shit. looking like PLA have the upper hand for sure. For sure. Holy shit! PLA just took took down that city. Meanwhile, Zen Mechanics is trying to attack Hague. Oh yeah, coin, coin, I coin said they played well. Oh man, it looks like for Bali it's starting this, to think, you know. This is a slap on the face for anybody who said who said that the game was over. And uh, Dave, are you listening? <laughs> because you you just said the game's <laughs> over to bring us the next game. Just look at that. That was the best comeback ever in the history of Rise of Nations. Wow, I've I'm absolutely speechless right now. That was an incredible match. I, I was kind of keeping an eye on the scores for the teams as well. And I think the, the team scores swapped over um, about five or six times during this match. Like, so many times I thought, oh, geez, Paul Valley's going to win. No, 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 Pele might have a chance. Oh, Pele's going to win. No, hang on. Geez, that was well played by everyone involved. Far out. I think TNO and Mouse definitely on the MVP list for this, for this game. But, wow. And Incredible. Zen Mechanics said it was my bad, and I would say I will, 
in an unqualified way i would say yes he he became overconfident at a point he should have just gone to enlightened rage as soon as possible and kill their side i i oh, think I, mean, I, I i understand why he would go science 6 because science 5 because it clearly looked like uh, yellow and orange had an edge over their side they were clearly winning but in games like this you never know this is amazing i have not seen such a game in such a in, in a long time oh my god i i can't i can't wait for the next game man that was insane can you um can you bring up the scoreboard the oh, yeah. score graph the oh, stats yeah. because this tells a really really fascinating story here um if you have a look there because basically you can see it's so obvious that timeless had a such a bad start to this game. He was just holding on for dear life. He was the guy that kept getting attacked. He had the Colossus, but look at that graph. I mean, he basically hung in there the entire time and somehow managed to get back into, you know, once he hit Gunpowder Rage with Colossus with Aztecs, that's when things started to kind of turn for, for green. But I, I'd almost say, at PLA, you've got to give it to every single player on the team. TNO and Mouse played absolutely amazingly. Timeless, also, you know, he didn't have the big score, but he had that role in the game where he basically walked into the middle got that map control and was basically defending the entire game with no wood. So Timeless did an incredible job to come back. I mean, TNT, yeah, look, he, he made that blunder where he lost his army a bit there, but still played a really solid game. And, you know, he was, they were winning their side at the end. So full credit to the PLA guys. Wow, what a team. What a what team, a team, team. effort there. And uh, Mashrur Tofa says it's going to be a 2-1, but uh, let me remind you, this is a best of five, not a best of three. So we, are, we have a lot of games to... Uh, play out still uh, we cannot take a lot of time for one game so uh, let's just quickly look at the military score tno had the highest kills and coin had the highest loss it looks like tno killed all of coins <laughs> guys because it's the same number and on the economy side zen mechanics had the highest knowledge but he just couldn't use it in the for the right time and i, I guess that's partially what's cost what cost for wally their game yeah, I think so. At, at I mean, least his side. At least his side. They could have won their side if the mechanics did not go extra science and uh, commerce. That, that was absolutely insane. This has definitely gone down as, uh, I'm going to call it probably the most exciting match that we've cast in this tournament so far. Um, easily, easily. Incredible, <laughs> incredible. That, that's all I can say about that. Jeez, that was incredible. And, um, yeah, I'm... Um, you know, I'm speechless, my, my jaws dropped, uh, this is crazy, and I'm just glad right now that we've got a best of five, so there's potentially, you know, two to, two to four more games similar to this coming up. Oh man, I am breathless. Let's, let's quickly jump into the next game. Yeah, let's do it, let's do it. Okay, so semi-final number two. All right, another four versus four. Uh, I am at the one second mark. Tell me when you're ready. Right, I'm at the one second mark too. So on your on your countdown, let's go. Um. All right. Three, two, one. Let's go. Oh wow! So the first thing I noticed, we have another match here. On the best map of all time, Aussie Outback. <laughs> Aussie Outback. Uh, this has no relation to the fact that Akron is Australian. It's purely through statistics and research. Statistics and research are very important, and that's exactly right. So, um, yes, statistically, this map, I reckon, in my opinion, has the best matches. Uh, it's up there, at least, with, you know, Sahara is also really great, and a few other, ma a few other maps like that. Um, what other maps do you think are the best? Best Rise Nations maps aside from Aussie Outback. Uh, I, I I love Great Sahara, just because just yeah. because of uh, the dynamic of the map. It's it's the games are not long. You can finish very soon. But if if uh, apart from Aussie Outback, the, another great booming game is uh, a map is uh, Great Lakes. Of course, you you're gonna agree with that. Oh, exactly. And I mean, yeah, Great Lakes. It's a different style. That's what makes Rise Nations great. You know, depending on the map, there's so many different types of, of games that can kind of eventuate. I mean, even you've got Himalayas and 
Amazon, I feel like they're kind of similar as well, they've got their own kind of niche, where it's a combination of being aggressive and booming as well. Um, but yeah, I can see I can see in the chat right now, I mean, Zen's saying, not gonna over boom this time, gonna be aggressive. Uh, and that's and the, that's the best tip I could, I could give him too. Just don't oh, overrule man, him. He, he had that game last time. I, I'm sure he is kind of blaming himself right now for that loss. But it's fine. That's that's the reason we had it best of five. So there are more matches to be played, and you are more likely to have uh, the game, the game winner to be actually the better player instead of the lucky play, uh, lucky team. Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, it smooths out the variance. If you know one team gets unlucky with bad rares or bad nations or something like that, mm -hmm. it means that you know you're not you're not uh, losing your tournament just on that bad luck. There, you've got plenty of opportunities to turn it around. And, you know, you look at the last match, though, I mean, I would argue that PLA had probably a weaker uh, set of nations to begin with, and they just managed to somehow make it work. And that was that was crazy, man. You know, four Valley guys, they definitely can't have any complaints about the nations they got. I mean, they had Japs, Germans. Um, normally, that's enough to, to give you a huge advantage in the early game, and oh, yeah. just, they couldn't make it. Definitely. And yeah. in the last game, actually, the, the nations that we thought were the underdogs, they actually uh, held... I mean, they were conducive to the whole PLA winning. Uh, if if uh, P a mouse and uh, TN uh, Dim and TNO did not uh, do well on their side, that was GG for PLA easily. The, it, uh, initially, in fact, they were three versus four. Yeah, man, that w that was that was three before, and I, I don't know how they managed to hold, but they they did, and you know TNO would definitely be uh, having many positive thoughts about that game for probably years to come. I think that's a story he'll tell his grandchildren. Um, you know, that game back against Four Valley and, you know, the inaugural semi-finals in Nevada. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the, the kids will be like, the kids will be like, oh, what? No. Stop boring us, Grandpa, with uh, these, these old stories about Rise of Nations. I mean, we're all playing virtual reality by this point anyway, so. Oh, yeah, and, <laughs> right, right. That, and he'll be like, remember the time that Rise of Nations game? five decades ago yeah i won that <laughs> I, I won one of the tournaments <laughs> but that that was that i mean if he's brag if he brags about that game i completely understand i would brag about it if i won that like it's just like in the oh. condition that he did oh absolutely and so let's look at the way this is set up at the moment so interestingly uh, basically the four teams uh, the nations are all on the opposite sides of the map uh, compared to where they were before just, and i mean just a so, second we've got another donation of four dollars uh thanks to goggle uh, if you can if you can comment on the uh, on the chat that'll be amazing um thanks to you we are now 20 percent are completed with our donation goals that this is this is working out really fine thanks a lot you guys for your support yeah appreciate it guys and yeah please keep the donations coming if you do enjoy watching this because it really does give um, a lot more incentive to get as much content out as possible and obviously um, work on you know future games and future tournaments um, and you know just pointing out right now for full valley it does look like you know on face value did they get enough access to uh to the sea here to build fish and the answer is they just managed to get enough they've got a slight access to the coastline here um just near green's base at the top and you can see the full valley guys are starting to build their docks there a um, bit of a lucky break there because if they were just slightly further back and they didn't have any access to the ocean, that would have been a huge kind of hole oh, to come out of because, man, it's so important to get those fish out early. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Like, if, if they didn't have this coastline, they would be dead. I, I mean, I, they might even just resign and save themselves the time. But luckily, they got just enough space for a four dog. And NTLCD USA just found, uh, asked us where, he can, where, where we can donate. And the link for that is in the descriptions. So, uh, yeah, if you go into the description, you will probably find it. So, uh, just let's quickly go over the nations from both sides. Um, for for Wali, they've got Koreans, Germans, Iroquois, British. All of these are amazing nations. Maybe Koreans not as good as the others, but uh, remember, last time we had Maya, which we thought was not as good, but it turns out Maya, like, uh, uh, Zen Mechanics did a great job with booming. And Koreans are similar, uh, similar to Maya. Maybe I would say Koreans are a little better than Maya for booming. So it, it looks like for uh, they're, they're, I won't be expecting for Wali to complain about their nations after this game. Not that they did last time or anybody did last time. 
and similarly PLA has got uh, Mongols and uh, Romans two, uh, two really offensive civilizations and along with Persians and Greeks all of these are amazing Persians and Greeks are going to be great for booming and Romans and Mongol Mongols can uh, clear out their <laughs> Uh, their enemies much sooner if they if they go on a rampage. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, I'd say so on the balance part, I'd pick between these two. Um, I would probably say, oh, look, it's fairly even. I'd probably say, I'd say for Bali, maybe you have a, a again, it's fairly balanced, but I like Germans, Iroquois, and British, just as nations, but then, you know, Mongols, Romans, Persians, Greeks, they're also decent on this map, especially Greeks. I find Greeks can be really, really strong on Aussie Outback. So, yeah, look, I think oh, it's yes, weird really. for another, another really good match here. And just before just before we proceed, we've got a $25 donation from Trees. Uh, if, uh, if you are in the chat, please let us know. So far, nobody who donated has let us in the chat, and I that, that's weird because I would, I would really like to know who is donating. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks a lot for that. We are already 70% of our donation goals. That, that's, that's amazing. I was, I was having this goal set for, to, uh, for tomorrow, but it looks like we might be able to just get a 50 by today. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and not, not, well, getting, not getting carried away by that. Um, uh, yep, uh, Kron, over to you. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, as we're looking at this match, I just thought be good to see what um, what strategies you know the uh, four Bali guys go for here because I feel like after that last match they probably are feeling a little bit um, you know a bit nervous right now because they thought they won that game and then they kind of came back and lost it so I can see that you know Surge here is going for an early uh, early military and early raiding here with British which um, yeah I think it's always a good move given you get that free archer on completion of the barracks uh, meanwhile you have got uh, coin here going for a very economic build with Germans I'm going for commerce, civic commerce too, and oh, that's definitely going to help. That's is that yeah. is going to help. He is he is Germans going and like they've got silk. Extra commerce is the is is just the perfect thing to do with uh, Germans. And I mean, yeah, going going um booming up like similar to what Danius did. I mean. Dan did a good job last time. Uh, you know, obviously it didn't work out for PLA uh, for 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 Bali in the long run. But I mean, going for that build, I think was definitely the right thing to do. You know, you just get those fish out, get your gold income up as high as possible as early as you can, and then just kind of ride that out to a, a really nice boom game into the into the mid game. Oh yeah, and uh, let's also look at the rare resources. For Wally or Zen Mechanics has got furs here, which he has not discovered yet. Then they've got Fappy again. And cotton here, well, bison, what else have got, wool, gems, silk, uh, they've got tobacco, is going to help, relics is going to be an amazing rare here, especially on this map where everybody almost maxes out on their knowledge income from university, this relics is going to give them an extra edge. Oh, seriously, that, those relics are definitely going to come in handy, and, and you know, just having... These guys have got dye as well. So remember, they have if they just haven't discovered uh, dye and furs. But if they do, that means these guys have all the four major library rares. Wow, that's that's a really strong thing to have on this on this kind of map, especially you know in this these kind of games. I mean, I definitely feel like Valley have got the better rares here, uh, no doubt. Uh, when you have a look at uh, you know what PLA have. They're kind of those rares that, you know, they're kind of like, eh, meh. You've got marble, you've got, um, you know, you've got wool and amber. You know, there's some good rares there, but they're not they're not the great ones. And you definitely want those library rares to try and get your uh, your research pumping as quickly as possible and essentially get to gunpowder edge much, much faster than the other team. Oh, yeah. And just pointing out here, look at that. Surge has decided to um, sacrifice some of his... Uh, his uh, library researches so that he can push his team forward. He has got those upgraded British, British archers, which he is using perfectly right now. Yeah, I mean, I can see that there's a fight here between the archers versus the British archers, and there's only going to be one outcome there. I mean, British archers are so good. The long bowmen, um, incredibly powerful, and you know they've got such good range. So, oh, yeah, quite yeah. a nice move there by Surge. And uh, yeah, they, I mean, these are the old, these are, they probably can take down a slinger in 1v1. 
Oh, seriously. I mean, I don't know if anyone's seen it, but you know, these long women can take out a tower. That's how strong they are because they've got more range than a tower does. It'll probably take them about, you know, an entire two hours to actually kill it because the armor is so good. Yeah. But um, they can actually sit there and you know fire arrows at a tower. That's how good they are. And uh, I, I bet two of these can take down a heavy cavalry. You you wanna bet something on that? Uh, uh yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if I'd take that bet. I mean, <laughs> that might be taking it a little bit too far. But we'll have to test this out. I mean, they are awesome. Man. They they're the best archers you'll ever get. And yeah, once you get, um, you know, if you can get a obsidian with British, with a big um, army of longbowmen, that can be pretty scary. Now, uh, let's quickly uh, zoom through the rare resources for PLA. PLA is not as lucky as last time. They, the last time, both the teams had uh, uh, Silk and Pappy, but this time Pappy is only for the Forwali or and Silk as well. So PLA, uh, it, I, I won't say... Uh, it's clear that PLA hasn't got as good rares as for Wally this time. They've got wool, horses, diamonds, but they've got none of those rares that you actually need to uh, for booming. Like, uh, if 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 they can manage to get holds of first, that that will that might even the game. But for now, uh, with silk, silk and silk and Pappy, for Wally is just going to be better equipped and ex relics as well. They're going to be better equipped for a long term game. Yeah, I think the interesting thing right now is that you've got, uh, as far as wonders go, you've got Timeless has put down the Colossus, and Timeless played so well last game with that Colossus, even though he was on the back foot. But, I mean, no one's gone for the Hanging Gardens yet. No one's gone for Pyramids. I think it looks like the Four Valley guys aren't interested in booming at the moment. They're probably looking to play a bit more aggressively and, you know, just go for, you know, a bit of strategic play, maybe a double here or there. Just as I say that, though, it looks like uh, Coin... Uh, has thrown down the, the Forbidden City. Oh, oh sorry, the, the, the Hanging the hang Gardens. And it looks like uh, Surge has already raided his side, and if you check Zen Mechanics, he is ready for some raids. Look at that. Two barracks, one Siege Factory, and one Stable. Uh, he's probably going to use uh, that Cotton as well. So, and on this side, I, it's clear Timeless is not equipped to handle that. Just look at that. Uh, Timeless hasn't even got a barracks out yet. So the, if if this attack, if 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 Zen Mechanics attacks with a strong army, that's it for Timeless here. He he doesn't even have have a tower yet. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he's if Timeless can see this coming. It looks like he's he hasn't really scouted that uh, Zen is is gearing up for a big attack here. Um, he does have the infrastructure in place. He's got elephants on the way as well. So, you know, elephants obviously are great for defending um, because they can't be bribed in your own territory. So I think um, he should be okay here, but yeah, definitely something to watch uh, for the next few minutes. Oh yeah, and uh, Timeless is making a mistake, I would s So when you are against Iroquois, Iroquois is so good at offense. It's, it's, just, it's just obvious thing to do is to scout out your enemy find out what he is up to. Uh, Timeless can already see the barracks and stable and he can just see his city getting sieged. So it's a clear indication that he needs to he, he needs to get his army out. He's just putting down the second barracks but I don't think he'll be able to do that in time. And Zen Mechanics just use ambush. I don't know if he's aware or not. Iroquois cannot use ambush. It's just it's just a bug in this game. Really, I, I didn't know that. So you oh, just uh, taught me something. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, check that out. And timeless, timeless does have some army here, but without without some help from TNT, I don't see how he's gonna survive that. And great job, yeah. Surge as well. Surge is keeping pressure. Yeah, well done by by Zen here. He's showing that he's definitely a multi-dimensional player. He can boom and he can rush, and. You can look at Yellow's army. He had a lot of units, but they were basically pinned against a wall there. Um, all those archers and slingers going down. And, yeah, he definitely needs some help. I think TNO is talking in the chat saying, you know, we might need to rotate and help him out. Oh, yeah. He says, go help, baby. <laughs> okay. And great thing. Uh, Coin is here to attack as well. This is what I call a teamwork. Now, uh, these Forwali has learned their lesson last time. 
um, they were winning their game, but because of Mouse constantly helping the other side, they could not attack. This time, they're making sure that nobody gets tripled or doubled. Nobody has an unfair game. And that's what you want to do in a team game. You want to keep helping your allies so nobody is at, an, at a disadvantage. Yeah, exactly. It looks like the, um, the four Bali guys are definitely playing more in tune with each other now that they're all putting a lot of pressure on and basically forcing the other guys not to move down to help out. And at the moment, yeah, it looks like Yellow has kind of got to fend for himself here. You know, yeah, losing that city and losing those barracks. Yeah, lucky for Yellow that he, it, it, none of his, I mean, that city that was not an economic hub for him. He did not lose anything, literally. So, except villagers, of course, or uh, scholars, I mean. So he is still fine. He All he needs to do is now get more army here and start, uh, yeah, he just needs more army. That's it. Yeah, I mean, Surge, yeah, is, Surge is here on the next stage already. <laughs> Look at that. TNT, TNT has got three towers. Is that perfect use of Romans? And oh my <laughs> god, that's bad. That's bad. TNO is fighting alone. That's, a, that's bad timing from be, uh, Timeless here. Timeless should be here already. But since TNO is, is medieval age, they, he just has a better chance to fight this off. Yeah, I think Thomas has got age three now, so he's starting to push back, and uh, he might be able to take that city back now. By the way, oh, of but Surge is coming back, so I don't think so. And meanwhile, look at that. Uh, I mean, Mouse is helping Purple, and Purple is helping <laughs> Blue. That's a perfect blend of team game. I'm I'm enjoying this so much. And these PLA guys have shown uh, absolute impeccable teamwork. Um, in all their games so far, and I mean, they really won last game because of that teamwork. So, you know, showing it again right now, you know, it's, it's like that classic storyline. You've got four Bali, you know, great individual players, but perhaps not that team chemistry that PLA have from playing together for so many years, and it's really showing right now. Oh yeah. Just quickly uh, going through the knowledge income from each side, it looks like um, PL, uh, the whole four Bali team is doing great for knowledge. Uh, Timeless is struggling a little bit because he just lost that city and everybody else seems to be fine. Coin is of course at is leading in the knowledge production because he's got the hanging gardens but he's not leading by a lot so it should be it should be all right. Now this is this this is the exact same thing what happened the last game. Do you remember? Timeless got attacked. He had to he had to fight back, and everybody else is trying to save Timeless. This is some somehow the meta of these games. It just I, I mean you just can't ignore that. Maybe Timeless does that intentionally so that uh, for Wally gets a gets a feeling that they're winning, and then they get over overconfident later. Do you think that's a strategy? I think it's all part of Timeless's great plan here. I mean, Timeless <laughs> is just one of those guys. He loves to be the underdog in the story. He just loves to be the guy that you know pulls it out and uh, somehow comes back in age four. So he's got the Colossus. This has pretty much gone exactly the same. As you said before, his economy is actually pretty good. So unlike the previous game where he lost a lot of his wood and you know metal and so on, in this game he's got decent enough kind of wood and income coming in that he's not going to be a liability. And you know, let's see if he comes back. He's got that Colossus, so he's done it before. Will he do it again? Oh yeah. And what I would expect. Uh, okay, he is getting the university, so he'll be back in the booming race very soon. Uh, Light Blue is getting his castle here, and once that castle goes up, there's going, there's going to be a big border push. And look at that, Surge is in the wrong side of the map. Sur where Surge is, he he's just letting he's just letting the second Zen mechanics getting get doubled. And Mouse goes for uh, he has got another wonder. This game. This is this is so similar. I feel. Yeah, I mean, so you know, Mouse, Mouse had a one. Mouse had a wonder, and I mean, it's the same map and the same player. So I guess we should expect it to be similar to a degree. But this is so much deja vu. I just almost wish the players were on the same side so that we could see round two. It's a little bit confusing to me right now seeing them opposites with PLA on the right hand side and Paul Valley now on the left. Oh yeah, and again pointing out that uh, coin is going to be. Uh, so it's it's like coin has replaced uh, it's just taken Zen mechanics place from last game. Uh, Zen mechanics was the boomer th uh, last time. This time it's coin and coin is doing a great job. He's going to be gunpowder age and 
based on what I see from the libraries, uh, it looks like he's going to be the first one to reach Gunpowder. Yeah, I mean, Coin's doing a great boom right now. He's making full use of those relics and, you know, a few other knowledge rares there as well. So I think, yeah, Formali have the knowledge kind of advantage. And if PLA want to try and press this, they're in a good position right now. But, you know, once they get to Gunpowder Age, they're going to have to sit back and, and play catch up. Oh, yeah. And we are seeing that Timeless is getting elephants. And you know what happens when you get elephants. Now the game is suddenly going to be in favor. Already Zen Mechanics doesn't have as big an army as Timeless. And if Timeless gets those uh, upgraded elephants, then it's just going to be uh, uh, Zen Mechanics trying to hold while the others kill. But on the other side, Surge has got a tremendous army. Look at that. That's huge compared to what TNT has. And those archers are, I mean, those British archers are already so annoying. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a big British army right there. And I mean, Serge didn't even go for Despot either. He's got Senator, so he's set up well for the long term here. Um, but yeah, it looks like, uh, I, I question whether TNT should be putting his army forward like this at the moment. Um, TNT just getting a bit close to Serge's army. Oh no, uh, he should life. not be. He's, he's getting more over ambitious. If he loses that army, I mean, his army is probably half of what Surge got. Surge has also has managed to bribe an elephant. Yeah, you can see Surge doesn't care that he's British. I mean, pretty sure they had elephants in Britain back in the day. Is that historically accurate? <laughs> uh, what is that? Oh, British in Roman Empire? Uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah. I'm not sure if yeah, there were ever I, any I, elephants. I, I think so. And, and look, look, at, look at that coin, just, uh, I mean, uh, Mouse just got doubled, and he said what the fuck, but at the, mo the moment he said that, Tiano came for help. And uh, coin has lost a major chunk of his army, he, while he is going for Gunpowder Age, without army, it doesn't matter if you have upgraded units or not. And Surge seems to be taking the win for the game, for their team. Look at that, while TNT is going to be aging Gunpowder sooner than uh, Surge, but Surge just has got a much bigger army. He, I think he's going to end up taking that city anyway. Yeah, I mean, those three towers are helping kind of uh, helping out TNT to hold the time being, and a good entrenchment there. I feel like TNT's got a good position, but just doesn't have the unit count that he needs to be able to kind of fight back against so many uh, British archers here. Oh yeah, and uh, I I was I would say time it's it's better for timeless to go help uh, TNT because I I don't I don't think TNT is going to be able to survive on its own against Surge. That's just a lot of British archers. Now what what Surge does not have here is a scout. So if 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 he can oh yeah. TNT knows that. Look at that. He's got two uh, two spies there. I would, if I was him, I was I would be making a lot more spies. Oh yeah, I think spies would definitely help kind of holding here. But I mean, you do look at, at Timeless too. Timeless has a really good economy. Um, you know, we talked about how he was a little bit lower um, early on losing that city, but he's already booming straight up again. So he's getting, and they've, they've got Forbidden City on the way too for TNT. So they got plenty of wonders. I think PLA's doing the right thing to uh, to win in the long game again. But it just depends, I guess, whether TNT can hold him. Oh, yeah. And TNT has forgotten. I mean, he is so embroiled in that attack. He has forgotten that he also needs... Yep, he has forgotten that he needs to get um, his eco up. Look at that. He, he just forgot his eco at 150 all. And that, that cannot be good for him. Meanwhile, uh, uh, Timeless just realizes, yep, yeah, it's it, uh, it's a waste of time to uh, go for Zen Mechanic, so let's help uh, TNO, TNT. And it should have been, uh, maybe if Timeless was a little earlier, TNT wouldn't have to lose that city and S Surge wouldn't be getting that bonus that you get when you capture a city. But it's not, it's, it's never too late, uh, These PLA is doing a good job still. They're just a little yeah. behind uh, compared to uh, Coin, and I won't. I, I I don't blame them. These guys have got uh, Pappy and Silk here. I bet they if once they find out that they had furs in this game as well, they're going they're going to be so mad at Sen for not scouting. 
Oh, exactly. And I mean, you can see that it looks like Surge is having to retreat here. I mean, Thomas has a really big army. And oh, yeah. But it, 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 yeah, that is a big army. But I would say Surge, Surge might be, there is a small possibility that he might be able to take both of them together. But Sir, Timeless just forgot his, his senator in front, and that's, that's not a good thing. If if Surge had sniped that, that would mean, yeah, that 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 would have meant uh, no armor for the rest of the army and no um, healing bonus either. Luckily, it was not sniped. On the other side, Zen mechanics making sure that he takes the uses his time. Look at that, his army is swarming in Timeless's base. It's just everywhere, making sure that if Timeless did not pay attention to him, he pays for it. <laughs> Oh, exactly. I mean, you can see crazy raiding going on. And, you know, Timeless's economy has dropped down to like 100 food, 70 metal coming in until he cleans this up. So this is definitely going to set Timeless back a bit. And meanwhile, you can see at the top of the map here, um, you know, big engagement here with uh, TNO going in for the, for the attack, Mouse going in for the attack. This is a great kind of matchup, Surge and, uh, and Coin versus uh, TNO and Mouse again. Oh, yep. And these guys are going to take back the city. And uh, Zen Mechanics is going to re retrieve, uh, retreat. But again, Surge has got an upper hand here. I still don't see how TNT TNT is not able to age, and he's also got he's nowhere as good an army as Surge. So it's all up to Timeless right now. Timeless needs to help him before he dies. And Timeless has got an amazing army thanks to that Colossus. Zen Mechanics has nothing. And it's it's he is wasting he is wasting time here, take, taking out Zen mechanics. He should be helping his ally, but uh, of course it's it's so much easier to comment right now. But in the game, there's so much going on that you can't you can't uh, do that. Yeah, exactly. It's easy for us um, looking from our ivory towers right now um, on the game, but in the in the heat of the moment, it's, it's difficult sometimes to make decisions without the information that we've got, and also you know with the adrenaline pumping through your veins. I'm sure these guys are probably uh, sweating bullets right now as far as um, oh, their heart yeah. rate goes. Oh yeah, and look at that. White and purple are going to take this Lutex. They are going to take Lutex. That, that was a big comeback. I don't know how they managed to... I mean, at one point, uh, TNO had lost the city and suddenly he is he's fighting back so hard. Oh man, seriously. Uh, PLA, are they going to come back here again? Because I felt like... I really thought the rares for Fall Valley um, in the beginning were, were quite good, but this is deja vu. This is, you know, that dream team of coin, uh, not sorry, not coin, of mouse and um, and TNO. Just it's it's like, the, the players, so well. players are lined up in the exact same way. Remember, Timeless and TNT were uh, allies. Uh, I mean, parties uh, last game and Zen Mechanics and were Surge were together. It's yeah. the s exact yeah, exactly. same matchup and it's the exact same result. I, or actually, not the exact same result. Uh, uh, last time, Tiano and Mouse were against Surge and Zen, and this yeah, time, so it, this time they're they're against uh, Coin and Dane, but they are very consistent. That last time they were owning, they're owning still. Exactly, I think yeah, really just Coin and Zen swap places, but everything else seems to be very similar at the moment. So it's kind of fascinating. A big engagement here between. Yeah, the two kind of teams at the top of the map. Yeah. Oh, and TNT just decided, fuck my city, I'm going to help that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, everyone's been there before, but I like the move. I mean, this is... Yeah, yeah. You know, losing mean, a city's... It's going, to, it's going to force Surge to go back, either either take uh, TNT's capital or go back. And now Surge is alone there. If both both uh, uh, Coin and... Uh, both Coin and uh, Dane have probably lost most of their armies. And yeah. with this now, wow. now, I think even even if Tieno just stays there alone, he can he can easily uh, or at least hold up to coin. Meanwhile, both uh, TNT and Mouse can kill uh, Surge's huge army. Look at that! Oh my God, Tim Timeless has that awesome army. Are you looking at that? Yeah, that's huge Zen, army. Wow. Zen, Zen is not even trying to uh, attack it. He's lost a lot of his eco. Well, Zen is not doing fine. Surge has to. Surge, Surge is the only player in in Forwari team who has an edge, and it's all up to him right now. He, he, he I, I would hate to be Surge right now because he, 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 he it's so much pressure. 
he could either help Zen, he could help uh, Coin, or he could kill uh, TNT. Because TNT's capital is right in front, but it, it's blocked. There's so many buildings around that. Oh man, so hard to be in Surge's position right now because it's like playing a game of chess. He needs to move his army like a chess piece somewhere. And you know, if you make the wrong move, it could cost the entire um, team the game. So he's got to be careful not to get doubled here. It looks like uh, White Blue may be coming in for a bit of a pincer movement here. Oh, yep. And Coin loses another city. Holy shit. I would never, I cannot believe what I'm seeing here. Man, this is absolutely insane. Wow, the PLA guy is playing so well. Yeah, and the predictions and were the same as well. Remember earlier in the game we said, oh, PLA doesn't look good. <laughs> and they turned Exactly, around. I mean... They just turned... I, I think they just got a knack for turning it around every time that they play. Man, they, they like being the underdogs. They don't like to um, set themselves an easy task. And, yeah, at the moment, uh, I'm just I'm trying to figure out. I just feel like they're... They've just got such good teamwork with each other. They're working together so well, and you know they're building great wonders in the background. And I feel like those wonders really do make a big difference. You've got Colossus, Forbidden City, um, and Pyramids being three really, really solid wonders. And that's exactly what you, what you want your team to have at this stage of the game. And Zen Mechanics is dead. He is literally dead. Look at that. His Those elephant raids from behind. Oh, but wow. he, I think he turned it around. He turned it around with the army. He's, I believe he's got a better army, probably, but he has no ego. Yeah, he, he looks like he might be able to hold here, but his economy is down to 90 food, 20 wood, 50 metal. Um, so that's uh, that's unusually low at this at this stage of the game. It looks yeah, like Yellow's doing a great raid in the background. He's doing back raid and uh, Timeless did such a uh, such a newbie mistake. Uh, Timeless did not bring scouts when he had elephants. Yeah, that's definitely anyone watching at home. Oh, it looks like Rome is um Rome is going to be sieged. Yeah. Rome is going to be sieged. A uh, that that's a bad decision from TNT as well. TNT should have known. Actually, he he did build forbidden, so not that he's dead, but he should have moved sure. his capital as well. Oh man, this is um, this is really finely balanced right now. This is almost like a base trade scenario. I mean, it just depends on you know what Mouse and um, and TNO can do here. Do they hold or do they go down and, and kill Surge? God, I, Actually, I, I PLA is in a much better position than uh, uh, for Wally. Surge is uh, by himself there. He has got. He, I mean, he has to fight TNT and Mouse's army. Meanwhile, meanwhile, TNO is there to fend for himself, and I, I don't think he'll be, he'll be having any problem. But there's something, to, something to know about uh, Coin. Coin is the only player very close to aging. So if this game draws out for some time, then yeah, Coin is going to take this, uh, at least his side. And thanks, thanks to all those spies, Zen Mechanics is finally, it seems like he is somewhat back in the game. Or at least he can hold. He's not going to die anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a very good point too about, you know, Surge's army, he's in a tough spot because he needs to make something happen. But also, by bringing his army that far forward, he's really vulnerable to getting doubled and basically trapped there, unable to reinforce um, with additional units. And, you know, it'll be... Interesting to see if his army is big enough to fend for itself, or if eventually he's going to get taken out by probably a double with TNO swinging down at some point. Oh yeah, and what Zen Mechanics doing here? It's 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 formidable, because if Zen Mechanics had lost this side, then Timeless could easily go and help uh, attack Surge, and that would be it. If Surge if Surge loses the edge right now, I if I was for Wally, <laughs> any player for Wally, I would say GG and end this. Surge is the only reason why everybody else is continuing to play and not giving up hope. Thanks thanks to him. Yeah, oh, exactly. And I mean, yeah, I think um, you look at Zen Mechanics right now. I didn't actually know that Iroquai could build elephants, but he's got a <laughs> decent elephant army going on here as well. Oh, yeah, he does. Just making sure. Are, you, are we at the same time point? 34, 46, 47? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much at the same spot, yep. And I can see that Zen's saying in the chat, he's saying, well, uh, effing Colossus. Uh, so Zen is, definite, Zen is definitely on his last legs here. But this is, 
this is still in the balance, I feel. You know, Surge has got a huge army here, and at the moment, PLA need to basically come down and, you know, leave their top vulnerable if they want to try and double him. Oh, yeah, and Mouse is back again with a big army. Man, this, there's so much going on in this game. Looks like Timeless is going back too, so Surge is going to get tripled now. Oh my god, that's yeah. A, that's a triple Surge cannot take. I mean, he's got a, a, a big army there, but even, even, even then. I feel like Surge oh, needs to somehow... Oh, so Timeless, to timeless hit, just decided yeah. to go back. I, I don't know why, because Surge still has a lot of army left there. Yeah, that was that was a bit of a blunder there by Timeless. I mean, Meanwhile, look at Tiano. Tiano is holding both Coin and Dane by himself. What an amazing play! Yeah, this is this is crazy, man. Because I mean, you look at Surge's army. Surge's army has actually just killed Mouse's army uh, straight up in a in a one v one fight. By the looks, of it. Oh, I mean, it's still going though. There's so many units. They're actually taking so long to kill each other. Um, you know, this is a good two minutes of just shooting at each other until one falls down to the ground. Oh, so yeah. I don't actually know who's going to win. And TNA has swung the magic wand. <laughs> he is still, he, he takes the city by himself. I mean, orange and orange and green both are there, but they don't want to fight TNO. Just look at TNO's army. And thanks to Mouse, as not the first time we're saying this, uh, the other side is back on their feet. And... Man. I feel like Mouse is just that nice guy, you know, the always, guy that always, always, always shows up. He shows up to your party with, you know, a six pack of beer. Um, he's just the kind of guy that, you know, it's just really just turns up when you need him. And I mean, I think we've got a cool TNO. I think he's the, uh, the the Harry Potter player here, swinging these wands like you said before, just making things happen. So uh, I'm pretty pumped about, you know, these guys. The, the performance they've put on today has been insane. And Jesus, it's looking good for PLA. I mean. Basically, because Zen is is pretty much on his on his last legs. Oh, but, yeah. he is. Yeah. He is. Okay. Zen, 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 even. Zen is. He can hardly has any economy. Um, all that's remaining is for timeless to kill here. Uh, Serge has lost all of his army, and uh, and yeah, Tiano and Mouse are strong on their side. I would say. Um, coin can age to enlighten day, enlightenment, but it's not going to make any difference. He's, he doesn't have a big enough army to make a difference. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, once you age, if you don't have that army kind of already in place yet, it, it makes it slightly better, but maybe the multiplier effect is only about, you know, 10, 20% stronger. And yeah, it just looks like at the moment, um, God, you've got the, the, the Harry Potter of Rise of Nations here. Oh, TNO yeah. is just uh, playing insane. But. And I rush with Dutch just said a timeless stab Mouse in the back when, when he returned for that city. Yeah, he kind of did. And if Mouse had lost that battle against Surge, then Timeless would be blamed for eternity. But thank, thank God he, uh, Mouse did not lose that. And oh, look at, oh my God, look at that. TNO is doing his part. He is raiding everybody at the back. Do you see uh, it, at Berlin? Yeah, oh wow, yep. Oh wow, really good rating going on there. Jeez, those heavy horses. That's it, this has been going on the entire match and it's just so hard to track all the action, but that's what wins the games, is constantly killing rares like that. Uh, Timeless is such a sick player. Man, this is so impressive right now. Oh yeah, and that's one reason why I never cast four versus fours or three versus threes alone, just because it's so taxing. Oh, exactly, I mean, Blood pressure gets raised a fair bit. I'm sure if you take a trip to the doctors, you probably need um, to prescribe a week off of Rise of Nations because these games are insane, man. Um, this is, yeah, this is incredible. You can see that I feel like this is starting to get to that point in the match where it's almost, you can almost call it for PLA because you can see the four Bali guys are starting to think, oh, yeah, look, it's, it's GG. Um, we're going to have to call it, call it, you know, brush this off and... Um, and try and come back in the next next match, but geez, what a second game this has been. What a second game. Uh, PLA just knows how to get back in the game. This is this is going to make them 2-0. I remember Serge just said in the chat that it, 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 it's the second game, guys. We still have three more. So if PLA, if Serge loses this, which uh, I mean, if uh, for Wally loses this, it looks like they are going to lose this. 
Uh, that would leave. All right, maybe maybe I am speaking too soon. Let's not draw conclusions because coins just reach enlightenment. That's it. I mean, we've seen so many comebacks before. I feel like we're probably going to jinx ourselves if we try and say uh, this match is going one way or the other. You can oh, see yeah. that Surge is coming in with a big attack here on Timeless too, which is looking like a fairly good um, engagement. And oh, coin, have a lot I mean, of look at coins. Our economy coin is completely screwed up. His wood and metal, thanks to TNT and coin, just said GG. I mean, one player resigns, and then I'll, I'll say that yeah, it's over. I won't. I, I still won't say GG. Let them resign. Yeah. Oh, I mean, wow, that's insane. Um, I don't know why coins would come was so low. It just must have been some really good raids. But at this time of the game, you know, every raid. Because of the multiplier effect, you're hurting so much economy, so, yeah, that's oh, awesome. Oh, yeah, and search says GG as well. All right, we've got a $3 donation from FSF Fear. Uh, thanks a lot for that. Uh, any kind of donation is helpful. Thanks a lot. And, yeah, that's it. That's it for the game. This is 2-0 for PLA. Wow, that's... I, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. That that is incredible. Look at the okay. Look at the score. So we got timeless. Timeless had the top score there with his Colossus and with Persians. TNO, the Harry Potter of Ron, um, he's, he's done it a, again. He's the second guy. Yeah. You've got nice guy Mouse. He's you know the nice guy just comes in and saves his allies whenever they need it. And that was exactly the same as the first match in so many different ways. You had Timeless with the Colossus, losing the city early on, always on the back foot, and then um, you know coming back to, to basically top score in this particular match. He, he must feel vindicated. Uh, wow. That was incredible. That was incredible. For Wally, who never lost a single game, has just lost two games straight. And that's a 2-0 for PLA and for Wadi. I, I'm sure PLA is feeling quite confident that they can they can win this semi-final and move on to the grand finale. Um, oh, exactly. And guys, this is a best of five. So this is not over yet. This if is you've not been watching the yet. so far, as a reminder, we've normally had best of three so far, that that would be enough to win a best of three, but this is best of five. So PLA still need to win one more match. Coin, uh, you know, for Valley and Coin, Coins team need to win, you know, the next three in a row. So that would require what they call a reverse sweep to win it, which is uh, which is never easy. But it's been done in esports history, and we're making esports history here right now with this Rise of Nation semi final. Oh yeah. Um. So, so let's um. What do you think? Do you think they can they can possibly come back here? Well, uh, I I know that kind of adrenaline rush you get. When you are, when you know you're on your last foot and you have to do all you can to win this, so probably that will help uh, for Wally, uh, for Wally, and that's all they need right now. And in the chat, N T C L D D U S A. If you have a, a drawn nickname, please tell us so it'll be better to address you. So he says that L versus P L A would be. <laughs> so I guess he's he's indirectly saying that L and P L A are going to meet in the finals. Well, let's see. There are still three games left for for Wally. Are we gonna see that? And we still don't yeah. know TGZ versus L. TGZ did an amazing job in against AZ1. So you never know. You never know exactly right. And I mean, just a quick comment up from me, I guess. Question for you, Jitin. Mm -hmm. I saw that at the end that uh, Timeless had a huge army and he had a heap of dragoons. And to be honest, a lot of times in Nomad, you, you know, you don't get to the stage of the game where you can build a lot of dragoons, but. Do you think Dragoons are a good unit to mix in with your army and gunpowder range? Oh, so the best part about Dragoons, I, I would never uh, take Dragoons just for, I mean, attacking the army. Dragoons are great for uh, assassinating the generals or the uh, monarchs. So that's what I keep them for. So I would assume that, it, so if, if Timeless did it right, like he had a lot of Dragoons and if he, if he microed them right, he could take out the opponent's uh, general all the generals, even scouts if he had to, and that would just leave the opponent with a big army but with no scout or with no armor. And that completely pays off if you can just do it right. Yeah, I feel like that's the next level of, of run that we haven't quite got to yet. I haven't really seen too many players, uh, probably the standard players do this a lot, but I haven't seen it too much myself. Um, so, 
Yeah, I mean, that's that's just an interesting point, I thought, with that army composition. But overall, I mean, is there any turning point in this match that you can identify? That, you I, know, I, I think first, build? Zen Mechanics should have discovered first. And next, I feel Surge and Zen Mechanics should have attacked together. These guys both had huge armies, but they split up and they just... Uh, they, they split up their uh, firepower. That was not good for them. Uh, initially, if you remember, Zen Mechanics got doubled at a point, and Surge got doubled at a point, but there was never a point where Zen Mechanics and Surge doubled together some, somebody from PLA. So all of that just uh, led to where we are right now. These guys should have worked as a team, maybe slowly take, take out Timeless alone, and that, that, would have, that should, would have been a better strategy. And as I said, discovering first would have helped him a lot. Oh, exactly. And I mean, you know, PLA, I feel like they made the investments into the long game here. They got the Pyramids, the Forbidden City, um, the Colossus, and, you know, as the game progressed, you know, obviously Coin had hanging guns, but that was just the one wonder, and I don't believe anyone else from, from uh, Fall Valley decided to, you know, make that long-term investment, and that kind of paid off for, for PLA in the long run. So. Oh, yeah, and just Irish does point out something really good. Maybe a Timeless had a lot of Dragoons because he had Colossus, so Colossus provides extra wood and wealth. That's just the resource you need for Dragoons. So it's possible he made so many Dragoons because of that. And that does make sense because even if you're raiding somebody, that's like, what, 20 Dragoons? That's, that's not how many you need for raiding. And Dragoons are oh. fairly weak because they can be countered by almost every unit. Uh, I would say the Archbishers can take out Dragoons, Archers can take it out. Uh, pikemen, if they're close, they can take it out. Light cavalry, take them out. So they, they're not a strong unit. They're just good for assassinating. Oh, exactly. And uh, I can see in the chat that um, I think uh, it looks like a good point there brought up by Fear You Fear You Death. Next game, because he's got to go to work soon, and I'm sure everyone else is uh, who's watching this right now can't wait to see uh, the next match, guys. Please, um, well, we've got we've got. Basically, 29, 30 people watching right now as well. Yeah, um, that's is, absolutely this is the awesome. the highest amount of highest viewers we have ever got. So thanks for the support. Yeah, and I'm not not surprised either because this, these games have been absolutely insane. So guys, please, while we're loading up this next match, can you please just copy the link? You know how awesome this is to watch. Copy the link. Let your friends know that this is 2-0 to PLA right now, and uh, we're going into the third match. Um, so let's get stuck into it. Oh, yeah, let's start. And uh, I am at the one-second point. Yep, okay. So um, I'm at 11 seconds, so you, you keep going and I'll catch up to you once you're, you're there. Uh, you are at 3 seconds? Uh, no, 11 seconds. So you, okay. you start and I'll... Uh, all yep. right, all right. So I'm at 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. All right, let's do this. I'm started as well. And this we have another... Himalaya. 4v4. Oh, yeah. Yes. So we're not going to see a third Aussie Outback in a row. And as much as I love Aussie Outback, I'm kind of thankful because I feel like it would just be trippy to see another game on the exact same map with the exact same people playing in the exact same way. Uh, I don't think my body could handle that. So we're going to see something different here. We've got Himalayas. And yeah, this is going to be fascinating to see how these guys go on a different setting with a different map and with no um, no fish to get that, that wealth income coming in. Oh yeah, and we have, I, I would say PLA probably is a better, at least based on the two games that we have seen, PLA did a lot uh, better on a water map. Let's see if we can do the same thing on a land and a completely land map. And you know, this time, if you have noticed, they, we have a substitution. from uh, Instead of TNT, Angelo is playing. Angelo is another great player. But uh, let's see if they can have just as good a teamwork as they did in the in the last game. If you remember um, against AZ1, uh, one of the games uh, was played by Angelo and that's the one they lost. And there is no correlation here. It was not Angelo's fault. It was actually, uh, I think, TNO's fault where they lost against AZ, I mean, AZ2. But still, something to know that uh, they may not have the same kind of coordination as they had last time. Let's see if they can get that. Let make that. That, that's true, because I feel like TNT, what an interesting player. I've never seen him play before, or at least not for a very long time. And in that, those 4v4s, he seemed to, in some ways, be a, a little bit of the weak link for PLA. But at the same time, he really held his ground and, and proved that he deserves a spot on this roster. And, you know, the results speak for themselves. They've just uh, gone 2-0 up against Paul Bali, who were considered one of the favourites for the entire tournament. 
And so I feel like, you know, by swapping out TNT, he's probably, you know, the safest player for them to sub out. Angelo is a great player too. And, and I don't think that team's going to get any necessarily, definitely not going to get weaker by putting in Angelo. But, you know, as you said, TNT's just come off two games where he's, he's formed an integral part of that team winning the game. Um, and it's a bit of a risky move to kind of sub him out on stage. Oh, yeah, that, uh, that's right. T- I mean, TNT, he has shown some great skills in the last game. And especially if you remember that time when he held the other side instead of saving his own city. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that really showed... Um, that was a great moment in the game, I think, so... Oh, yeah, that's right. And, we, uh, and yes, T's just donated and we have completed our goal of $50. That's much sooner than I expected. Thanks, guys. It means a lot. Well, absolute legend. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it, mate. You're a good bloke. Um, <laughs> and let, let's um, let's quickly talk about the nations here. So we've got um, for PLA, we've got Spanish, Dutch, Persians, and Germans versus for Bali as Aztecs, Greeks, French, and British. Damn. So I mean, is look- British again. <laughs> Then that's, that's that's the kind of hack I want to learn. Oh, I mean, seriously, talk about you know playing with a familiar nation. I mean, he's just played them twice, and I'd probably argue that you know British, um, they're just one of those nations that are really solid, and I would always, I would never be unhappy to get British. So he's got to be fairly uh, satisfied with that. So you got British, French, Greek, and Aztec for their team, um, with Zen as French. I mean, are we going to see? Dare I say it, Despot here from Zen, um, given how close he is to Mouse on the map. Well, let's quickly check. Yep, I think we might be able to see that. And that's that's going to be a good option too, because he's against Persians. Persians are not uh, the best nation to defend, one of the slower nations. So uh, he may be able to turn this game around if he um, if he goes for despotism and just get some help from Surge, who is British. So, and you know, British despot that's a common combination to see as well. And it's just something that's to point out in the in the chat. Uh, Spiredon says that it was uh, Steve's birthday a few days back. So yeah, let's take this opportunity to uh, wish Steve's happy birthday and <laughs> may you have all your Rise of Nation dreams come true. Yeah, happy birthday, Steve. That's awesome, mate. Um, and happy birthday from everyone in the entire community. Um, can't wait to see uh, the EL games uh, later on, uh, which will be cast in approximately, I don't know, um, eight, nine, ten hours from now, where, wherever you are in the world. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, hopefully we get to see a Steve's uh, cameo in those matches. We'll wait and see. And uh, look forward to, uh, to uh, seeing you in the lobby um, soon for many games to come. Oh, yeah. All right, so yeah, uh, we were talking about the nations from both sides. Um, we've got, so for Wally, he's got French, British, Aztecs. All these three are quite uh, amazing in the terms of big offensive. They are, they, uh, if they can do a double or triple, I, don't, I, I think it's going to be uh, really interesting to see, especially because none of the PL, uh, PLA players except TNO has got a defensive civilization or even an aggress- aggressive one. I consider Spanish, Dutch, and Persians uh, somewhere in the middle range. Persians can be strong, and Dutch and Persians, of course, are strong in the late game, but the early game, uh, they're not that good. So uh, if if uh, Forwali does a quick rush in this game, they might be able to wrap it up very soon. Yeah, I think that's definitely possible here, because, I mean, they've tried to outboom PLA in the last two games, and it hasn't really worked. And I just wonder, if you're if you're sitting from the Forwali perspective here, I mean, are you really going to try the same thing a third time? I mean, that's the definition of insanity, right? Is to do the same thing expecting a different result. So this is a different map, and definitely things could turn out differently. But I feel like if you're for Bali, you just got to go for it. You've got French here, you've got British, um, two great allies historically as far as, you know, going back in real life goes. And I feel like if they can bring together the power of France and Britain here, um, as Coin says, France is the best, uh, Coin being a bit biased there as a Frenchman himself. Um, yeah, I, I can see in the chat though, Mouse did say, he said in the chat to his teammates, he said, I've got French in front of me, I'm going to build my second city back. I think that's a really intelligent move. That's decision. a really intelligent move. And I I, yeah. I mean, I, I guess because of TNO and Timeless, these guys are uh, conversing in English, and I have to say, Mouse speaks really good English. Um, 
I would I would love to see Mouse on our on our post game interview. That'll be amazing. Because oh, he certainly easily like... both the game both the first two games. You, you uh, I think you would agree that he was a major. Uh, he was a major influencer. He was the uh, one person because of whom uh, the uh, the other side got that edge or got that um, time to breathe and get back in the game. Oh, seriously, I think Mouse has definitely been the linchpin. You know, Mouse and uh, the Harry Potter of Ron being TNO um, has yeah, they've both done an incredible job, um, kind of anchoring this team. And then Timeless, geez, this is like. An all-star team versus an all-star team, really, when you look at it. Um, they've all played so well. It's it, This is the beauty of Ron. It's such a, a magic team game where individuals can make a big difference, but ultimately it comes down to, you know, working together as a team. Um, oh, you can yeah. see that it, it looks like Surge is raiding here. With He went middle one, so he's gone for fairly early pressure here. And, uh, yeah, it looks like, looks like he might get a raid off on that Bison. Oh, yeah. And he, he I think he was trying to get that armed merchant raid. But uh, it's a good idea to retreat because that armed merchant is going to take a while to get uh, to be taken down while Mouse already has his barracks up. So he's going to be able to get archers much sooner. So uh, a good decision by Surge. He saved his heavy infantry right there. Yeah, oh, exactly. As soon as you realize that they're going to die, the best thing to do is run away because, I mean, as everyone knows in this game, if you can save your units, each unit is so much more valuable later in the game. If you raid with three units and you can get them all back, um, get them all healed up, and then add them to your army, suddenly your army looks so much bigger uh, when it comes to those fights in, you know, classical age and um, and in medieval age. Oh yeah, and and look at that, um, Surge. I, I I I don't know. I must have missed the chat, but Surge just uh, allowed a Zen mechanics to. Uh, not raid at all. He he's allowing Zen mechanics to go for a full boom, at least till ancient. He does Zen mechanics doesn't even have a barracks yet, and while Surge raids, so Zen mechanics can focus on his fast attack in the classical age, and that is a wise decision there. Yeah, I can see in the chat too uh, for PLA. Um, Mouse just said uh, he said, "Effing French and Britain kill quick that side. We lose because of the nation." So Mouse has obviously identified that he's got British and French in front of him, and he doesn't feel good about his chances as far as yeah being able to, to compete with French. Um, you know, if they go despot and have that healing, uh, either from a despot or from a supply wagon. Oh yeah, and that's an amazing foresight. That's the kind of foresight you need to have to win such tournaments because you can't be overconfident and think, oh, I am, I am the boss. I'll win in any condition. He knows that the the other team is not. They're not noobs. They they know how to play and. If if he if he's not ready, he needs to tell the other side. Yeah, you guys win because we are already we are, we might be um, <laughs> we might not be able to make for so long. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, you look at PLA's nations here. They've, they've got Spain as well. So we got Dutch, Spain, Germans, and Persians. And I can't help but um, feel that they haven't exactly got the best nations they could have. Without, without saying it's it's too bad, but I mean, yeah, just a, a lot slower nations in comparison. Spain obviously is awesome for for the scouting purposes, so there's lots of other benefits. But just in a straight up battle, um, you know, coming up against Coin on the left hand side with Aztecs and Dane with Greeks, yeah, probably a slight advantage to the Aztecs, I guess. Oh yeah, and I, I would say I love Spanish as a teammate, not my own civilization. I would love to have a oh. Spanish teammate who tells me everything, but I, I don't want to be that. It, because uh, compared to other civilizations, they're not as good. Of course, the initial ruin bonus helps, but uh, apart from that, nothing else. And Sir just lost two units there uh, while trading sugar. He's been doing a good job, but, well, was that worth losing two units? Maybe. It's sugar. So. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, I think I'll, what's I'll say because of sugar is, if it was. Oh, yeah. what, what important was he should have raided Mouse first, for Mouse's sugar merchant. But uh, well, he Mouse still has sugar, so now he can have cheaper elephants. And that ten percent on elephant is a lot. Remember, they already cost hundred or something. So it, that ten ten percent means he's saving ten wood for every elephant, or even more than ten. Yeah, that's a very good point. And I mean, the other thing too is that. Um, whenever you know you raid rares, I always make a point to make sure you right-click on the rare and raid the, the best player on the other team. And I feel like 
you know, if you rate against, um, oh, I mean, PLA has got great players on, on all their all their players on their team. But I mean, I know if you're playing against say Brax and and then you first Boo as well, I always try and kill Boo's uh, merchant first because who really cares if Brax has sugar? It's not going to make too much of a difference. Oh yeah, and yeah, Timeless is uh, making use of his Spanish powers. Uh, he just raided sugar, and I guess the next stop is going to be marbles and then uh, gems probably. And yeah, look, look at that mouse, mouse, uh, mouse just um, used ambush to check out what uh, Surge is up to. And I think he he just said he rushed. What the fuck? What? Uh, I I don't see any rush. Do you, do you know what he's talking about? No, I'm not sure. Uh, it looks like he thinks that he's going to get rushed, but I don't think he scouted any siege workshop or anything like that. So. Um, oh yeah. Well, um, and here's probably Zen. just uh, Zen has yeah. got commerce too, so he is ready for a despot like despotic rush. A good idea by him, no doubt. Yeah, I think that's what it's definitely, I think, I, I don't know, I mean, whenever you get French, it's always, it's never a bad move to get that spot. But in this situation where you're so close to your opponent's capital, and I know that it's um, obviously Persians, and so you can't get the cap sack in the way that you normally would. But still, just the sheer fact that it's so close, your supply lines are so close, you can get that healing effect. Um, and, you know, they've just played two booming games where they didn't really win um, either of them in the long term. They gotta try something different here, and I can't wait to see this. I mean, interesting to see Zen play very aggressively because he's more of a boomer. It is his natural style. Oh yeah. I mean, both, there's no not a lot of action going on so far. I think everybody is trying to get their eco up. Uh, here's uh, your coin has gone for senator instead of despot. So yep, he is looking at the big picture, not just the game. And I would say Despot is more su suited towards one versus ones or two versus two, when you have a definite enemy and you know that there, the chances of getting doubled are not a lot. But on a four versus four, Despot is well, no, it's it's risky. If you, if you lose all your army, that's it. It's going well, to take the interesting thing. I don't I don't know if we pointed this out yet or, or not, but I mean Zen went for a very uh, ballsy kind of technology choice here because he went for commerce to before age two uh, without silk so he would have saved up for quite a while to get that and i think that's why search was able to protect him in that early game and he basically skipped you know that early military to defend and now that he's got commerce too with despot um there's going to be a huge french army that's going to get um, built here and i wonder if pla will kind of identify this and be able to prepare and defend against it oh yeah and uh sir just said angelo is shaking we got this and the, yeah, so the, if you look at that uh, caravan route for mouse, that route is very easily raidable. And look at that, mouse has got uh, a lot of light cavalries, which I think he's gonna. Uh, no, you know, he's he's gonna save those. He's gonna save those. So those light cav or he he could not save two of those. It, it, it's a good idea to have light cavalries because uh, they let you raid the opponent's siege units. And that's all Mouse needs right now. He is he is uh, set on a good boom. He is uh, closing in on the 150 commerce cap. All he needs is n no siege attack. Since he already knows Zen Mechanics has got a uh, death spot, so he he is expecting uh, some some siege attack at any time. But it looks like Zen Mechanics is not uh, ready for uh, an attack. I mean, he he may not even care about an attack. All he cares about is getting some nice raids going and using that uh, plunder. Oh, I mean, yeah, and you look at, I like the fact that Mouse um, has got his um, attrition fairly early on here, just making it a little bit harder to um, to attack. Obviously, Despot nullifies that a bit, but it's still doing a lot of damage as the troops walk between, you know, his base and, you know, the actual army where they're, they're trying to raid and, and trying to attack. Oh, yeah, and... I mean, these guys are doing a good job. Uh, Surge is m keeping pressure on the second capital. Meanwhile, uh, Zen Mechanics is here raiding the first capital. And Mouse, Ma Ma I mean, Mouse's eco is fucked up. Look at that. He, he uh, has to bring in militia to defend himself. And when you have to bring in militia, remember, shit's going down. That means <laughs> you are on the edge or you have to give it all you, you have right now. 
it's all up yeah, to Angelo. Never... At this point, it's all up to Angelo. Can he save that capital? But looking at his army, I don't think so. Oh, exactly. I mean, there's potential here that if Mouse is not careful, he could be... No, he has got a third city, so he won't be eliminated from the game, but he could potentially lose both cities here if uh, if they can't manage to hold this off somehow. Oh, yeah. And Mouse, Mouse is torn apart between two places. He doesn't know where to go. Um, look at that. Surge has got three catapults. He's doing an amazing job. A big army from Surge. And Mouse just doesn't know what to do in this condition. Yeah, I mean, Mouse, Mouse is such a smart player. He identified that this was coming, but just because he can see it coming doesn't mean he can necessarily stop it. And I think he's done everything he could. Uh, maybe something he could have done is build that second city a bit further back or maybe to, towards um, the center, oh, yeah. as, opposed to, as opposed to opening up two fronts, which really left him kind of vulnerable to being doubled there. Oh, yeah, I completely agree with that. And at this point, Serge is gaining momentum. Oh, meanwhile, on the other side, I would say these guys are probably winning. Uh, TNO, TNO is aging to medieval, but he, I guess he's just confused what to do. Should he help Mouse or should he? Oh, and Mouse, yeah. one, but, oh, it's a timeless, timeless just asked for help from TNO. And of course he needs it. There's a double going on there. And uh, Tieno is a little late. He, if he loses that, oh, he lost that city. And he lost that city to Aztecs. That's a lot of bonus for Aztecs. That is. I mean, so much plunder that's going to uh, eventuate from this. And you can see that, you know, Aztecs, Coin playing with Aztecs, he's definitely in his element. Um, as we saw uh, recently, Coin, great player when he plays Aztecs. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. <laughs> no uh, doubt. Yeah. Uh, Ron knows that. I, I know personally, so just take my word for it. He is uh, an exceptional Aztecs player. And that's a pretty scary situation because Coin is such an aggressive player. He likes to do ambushes. He likes to kill every single little unit he can because he just feeds off that thunder. And, you know, like any Frenchman does, um, yeah, he's doing a great job right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I would say Tieno. So Tieno, if Tieno was already there in that city, Ciudad Real, if he was already there, he would have um, prevented that cap, uh, that city bonus, city capture bonus, and that might have helped them. But uh, he made a mistake. He was not there in time. And you know, Aztecs, when they get bonuses, they just keep. I mean, they're they're the best uh, civilization for going on with the momentum. That just works out perfectly for them. Yeah, there's been some really good. Um Really good play. I mean, I feel like Full Valley have just, yeah, they've, they've done this one well. They've identified that they had, you know, they're up against nations that are slightly slower and, you know, taking full advantage of that. Uh, looks like um, Zen just lost his despot. I'm not sure why the despot died there, but starting to get a bit of attrition now. Um, but it, it shouldn't last for too long. So I, I, I think he, 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 may, he may have just killed it because it was low on health and he wants to get a new one. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. I mean, that's a really good move too because. Obviously, it's frustrating when you got a despot down to you know low HP that could die at any second in the battle. So sometimes it's better off just killing it and uh, getting a new one. Yeah, and, and look at Mouse. He's so calm at this condition. I he, he I mean he is he's still not giving up. He knows the other side is also not doing as good. And he still he's still positive about it. He he says he'll uh, build forbidden if he can get some food. And Surge is nailing with British as always. I guess British is just an amazing civilization. You, 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 there's no second thought about it. No, exactly. I mean, Serge so and Serge so has had plenty of practice with British in every single game so far. So he must feel like he's thankful that finally, um, you know, he's he's really making a big impact here, um, getting all the momentum for his team. And it looks like that is a wonder going down there by Serge to hang and gardens are being built, and that's just going to help set them up for, you know, if this game does kind of stabilize, having hang Gardens is going to make it even, even better for, for Full Valley here. Oh, yeah. And uh, while Tieno is doing great on his side, it just, I, I just don't see, it. Uh, Angelo has not been playing up to the mark in this one. Yeah, I mean, that's that's interesting, I, I guess, with TNT swapping out for Angelo. I mean, Angelo is a great player, but you know, he might be a bit rusty. He hasn't got that match experience. 
might also be a bit of nerves as well. I mean, stepping into uh, game three when your team's up 2 0 against Four Valley here in the semi finals of the inaugural Nomadian tournament, that's that's got to be some, uh, some nerves to get over right there. Okay. And yep, Zen Mechanics is going to take that. So this is this game is going to be uh, Mouse loses capital. Sir yeah, just well. Sir just asked in the chat why are they still playing, and I think Sir should Sir should be the last person who should, should ask that, because two games straight in row when PLA might have lost they got back so I I I wouldn't I wouldn't say that they they are the ones who give up. Oh exactly I mean God after those last two matches uh, if PLA were down to one city with one citizen left I'd still say they should stay in the game just because you don't know what kind of comeback they can. They could try and figure out here. Um, yeah, look, I think obviously at this point in the game, it's, it's looking like it's GG. They are starting to call GG in the chat. Um, yeah, a good play there by Fort Valley, but um, this one was a much quicker game than the last two. Oh yeah, definitely. And looks like, uh, and yeah, you cannot blame PLA completely for that. I, I, although Angelo did not play as good, but uh, these guys just had a better nations for such kind of rush. So and they and the best part was they utilized the nations for their advantage and that's how you win these kind of games. Oh, exactly. I mean, uh, if you had to boil it down, I mean, you had good strategy there. You had Surge doing an early raid there, um, and then you also had Zen going for basically being protected by Surge, going for Commerce too, and then getting Despot and Comp to Despot on a map like this. I probably wouldn't have seen that coming to be honest, and that's pretty scary to come up against. Oh yeah, so it looks like that's 2-1, we're going into the fourth game very soon, let's not take a lot of time, we'll quickly check the military and economy, um, Surge has the highest number of units killed, he's, he's also the MVP from his team, while TNO is the MVP from the other team, uh, I think TNO and Time, uh, and TNO and, uh, yeah, Timeless, they may have been able to win in the long run, because uh, TNO seemed to be doing really good there, if they were just, if yeah, they were, I if this was just a two versus two in that case. Yeah, I agree. I think um, based on the form that they're in at the moment and the way that game is seeming to pan out, um, you know, it would have been interesting. Coin was having a really good game too, but uh, it would have depended on, I guess, if Coin made a mistake or if, you know, that if Timeless and, um, and Tino were able to kind of play as well as they have been recently. And yeah, I would have given them definitely a full chance of winning in the long term there. But yeah, unfortunately, uh, I think it just came down to you know, maybe um, maybe Mouse could have built his city further back rather than to the side there and just left himself a little bit less vulnerable to that attack. But um, yeah, look, it was in a tough position there against, you know, British and French, who were a great kind of combo to come up against. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's just something uh, Evil Zima in the chat pointed out. Angelo has the worst kill to loss ratio. It's 7 to 47. <laughs> yeah, that's... It definitely doesn't help, and I mean, he was playing as Dutch, so he's um, I guess he's he's always going to be a little bit slower in that early game, but still, yeah. Let's um, let's see if he bounces back. I guess if he plays firstly, and and then if he bounces back in game four. All right. So we are ready for game four. Um, I, I'm I'm just loading this. Yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll add it as well. So okay. James James already says say hi to your roommate. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, very funny. He's <laughs> yeah, he's doing some cooking, so it's all right. Just uh, let people work. I am uh, I'm at the three second point. Uh, yep, I'm at three second point too. So um, if you count us down, let's get started. All right. So one, two, three. Let's go. Did you say you're at seven seconds? No, uh, I'm at five seconds, so it's okay, all good. All right. um, same. Oh my god. And guess what map it is? This is. Oh, that's the lucky charm for PLA. It's Ozzy Outback! Ozzy Outback <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Kron's favorite map, too. Man, I don't know why I like this map so much. Yeah, I, 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 I will never figure out too, man. Could it be? Could it be because you live here, or <laughs> could be? <laughs> Look, 
it could be something to do with that. But still, uh, after game one and game two, I was pretty pumped, man. And you can see in the chat already, look, the, the Full Valley guys already have uh, post-traumatic stress disorder here because I can see Serge saying, bad vibes, bad memories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then look at their cities. Do you see Serge is so far away from everybody and even Coin. I mean, they're spread out in the whole map. They're, they're taking more than 50% of the map for themselves. So we're going we're gonna to see a, a close combat very soon. Uh, it, uh, let's quickly check the nations out. Yeah, so let's do that. Holy um, shit. But yeah. Look at those nations. This time it's completely turned around. This time PLA has got the offensive nations. French, Germans, Romans, and Spanish. Wow, that's, that's crazy. And I mean, Spanish normally... Not really a defensive nation, but on a map with water like this, getting that, getting those uh, free ships at the beginning is really going to mess around with Four Valley's um, fish and also their mental state. Because yeah, having a bloody trimy firing at you when you're trying to focus on everything else is only going to be frustrating them. And look at that surge has surge is so close to TNO, and uh, oh, surge is also slightly unlucky that he's against like he's right in front of the the German player. So what what do you think? If, uh, is Serge, Serge gonna do with that? He knows he's against German. Germans are super fast. Oh look, what I would what I would love to see here is um, for anyone who caught the stream last night, we actually did this ourselves. But Koreans, when they're really close to the opponent's um, capital, you can basically build a tower. And because Koreans don't get um, any damage, like they can't, if someone's attacking their tower while they're building, they can still continue to build it. He might be on the Tower of Berlin there, but I'm not sure if he's close enough. He might be just a bit too far away. Yeah, he, 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 I mean, he might be able to do that once he gets Civic, but not before that. And Sir just said, yeah. leave me as a bait, don't worry about me. And he's right to think about that. Look at, look at that. He is, uh, Serge is probably going to get doubled by French and Germans, both of them amazing civilizations. But uh, if I had to be a civilization to handle... A double, I would rather be Koreans than anything else. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of cool. I'm, I'm fascinated to see how this plays out because I really like the move of Sergio building his city so far towards the enemy, uh, you know, for obvious reasons, being Korea. And if there's a way that he can kind of stabilize, build a few towers, make himself really hard to, to be attacked, and build his second city possibly to the bottom left of Seoul, They'll be able to take so much map control and you know win in the long in the long term. Kind of like how PLA were able to win in the long term in that first match, just by taking that map control and taking enough mountains to kind of starve the, the opponents from uh, building anything with metal. Oh yeah. And these guys have got nice rares as well. Uh, silk, silver, and sugar as well. Relics. So it's gonna be it's gonna be helpful for these guys to uh, age up faster. Uh, by the way, I just I, I, I would just like to mention before we continue, thanks Faruqi for the donation. And yep, it means a lot. Any again, anybody who is willing to donate, please do. Uh, we really like it. And uh, so pointing out here, looks like TNO is not that far ahead. Serge is actually building his library faster than the German player, so he must have got a lot of uh, ruin bonus or something. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there, but um, yeah, as you said. It's surprising to see that you know Koreans is building faster than Germans here, given Germans are one of the fastest nations uh, in the early game. But I mean, yeah, as you said, I know Serge is, is a really good scouter, and perhaps he's picked up uh, a heap of ruins. Uh, I might actually check that in the stats quickly. Uh, yeah, ruin bonuses. It looks like TNT's in the lead with 150, um, and Serge, Serge had 75. So no, it wasn't a uh, great deal. But um, who knows? Maybe it was uh, extra wood that he got. Yeah, I wonder. It could could be the extra wood, the seventy wood he got. But then he, uh, Tiana got seventy as well. I don't know. It's, it's sometimes search just, uh, you know, he can hack this game. <laughs> oh, exactly. And I mean, speaking of hacking, though, I mean, you've got the, the Harry Potter of Rise of Nations here, uh, Tiano as Germans. He's played really, really well with um, with all the nations he's got so far. But I haven't seen Tiano play with a nation. Quite as good as Germans, I believe. So I, I wonder, what, was he Germans last game as well? Actually, I think he was, but I guess he didn't get a chance to shine and, in that game. And because... I think TNT was Spanish last game as well. Yeah, I think the um, I think the the random the random number generator in Rise of Nations 
definitely is broken at times because it seems like there are times where you do get the same nation twice in a row and i guess that's just uh, the way it works out but yeah i mean it's it's good if you're germans but it's probably not as good if you're uh, tnt oh yeah and tnt well tnt is supposed to be highlighting the uh, rare resources and it looks like these guys have got Pappy two silvers and two silks that's the waste of rare resources i would never like two silvers and two silks there's no point in there yeah too much double up and um and just got, in the chat yeah point oh sorry you go oh yeah they've got bison uh, sugar relics and spice as well so yeah uh, i would say good rares for aging up quickly and and rating oh exactly and i mean interesting the fact that we haven't really talked about it at length but tnt is back in this match now angelo has been subbed back to the subs bench um do you think that was harsh or was that a, a good move by PLA? I, I think it was a good move because uh, no, I, I, would, I, think, I know that Angelo is an amazing player. He's, um, Angelo is a lot like Lad Cazador. Both of those, these players are amazing at 1v1s, but I guess they just, um, sometimes they're not ha as good with the teams. And uh, maybe because PLA had such a good record in the first two games, uh, with these four players, so they just wanted to maintain that and uh, get TNT back. And I would, I, I wouldn't be surprised, even if Angelo was doing fine, even if last game Angelo did uh, his best. If you just see that a particular four-player squad works for you, and this is the semifinals of a big tournament, yes, I, I would not take risks. Yeah, I agree. And you can see at the moment TNT uh, went for early military and he's doing a great job raiding Russia here because, I mean, Russia does have that attrition, but the problem with attrition is it takes still a really long time to kill, you know, heavy infantry um, if you're just relying on attrition alone. And it looks like Coin is taking a lot of damage. Um, he can't, you know, cut his wood down during this time. Um, he's being pushed back a lot economically. And being Russia, he's already quite slow. So... I like that move by uh, by TNT here, applying a bit of pressure, and basically making Russia even slower than they were before. Oh yeah, and Dane is coming to his rescue. Well, since Dane is supposed to be helping Serge, if he's here, that just means uh, Serge is by himself for some time. Um, we haven't seen any rage from ye yellow or purple. What do you think about that? Last game, we saw an early raid from Serge while Zen Mechanics boomed, and that was a good idea. Um, in this one, we are not seeing that. Yeah, it looks like PLA is on the offensive here. And I mean, interesting in the chat earlier, I think, I believe Serge basically said to his teammates, he said, hey guys, I'm going to be the bait here. I'm going to hope that they attack me and, you know, try and triple me. So you guys all go to the other side, concentrate your forces there and try and, you know, take out a TNT or one of those players. Um, and I don't know if, uh, if you know, the, the PLA guys are necessarily going to fall for that. I mean, if you look at the map right now, from PLA's perspective, they've almost completely surrounded Surge's capital here. Um, and it would be kind of funny if they, they did manage to surround it. That wouldn't be good for Surge, but um, being Koreans, I guess, it's probably not the worst nation to be. Oh, yeah. I would say, it's it, yeah, it's, if anybody had to be doubled again, it's Koreans. Koreans is more likely. And it, it looks like it, it may work out for, um, for Wally because... Um, it's it's clear choice for Timeless and TNO here to double uh, uh, Surge, but they uh, they might even go like split up between Dane and Surge. That won't be that won't be a bad idea. I want I I wonder if Surge is doing that just to attract attention and to <laughs> to force these guys to attack him. Oh wow! Yeah, I mean that that Colossus going down um, right in the front of her. Uh, the city that's like waving a massive carrot or like waving a red towel in front of a bull saying here boy here boy um <laughs> yeah. because i can guarantee that the pli guys would be sitting there looking at that colossus thinking man it would be so nice to have that big colossus uh in the uh, color of yellow or purple instead of in red right now and yeah i think uh, thomas is saying in the chat let's rush and as the french player here i would think why the hell not Oh yeah, and uh, here uh, TNO went for extra commerce. He's still not H two, but so yeah, technically they are late for a rush. 
Yeah, I think that's a smart move though. I mean, on this map, if you go, um, you know, Commerce, okay, so yeah, Commerce 2. I guess I'd like to see Timeless to go Commerce 2, maybe Despot here. Com 2 Despot would be a really strong build, but looks like Timeless is deciding to go for the uh, the quicker variation, which is just your plain old straight down the middle, um, you know, age up to age 2, and then I guess whether he goes Despot or not, we'll soon find out, but I suspect, given it's Timeless, and given Timeless is such an aggressive player, he's probably going to go Despot here. Yeah, and uh, here, Sir just pointed out that Mouse is Despot, so these guys need to watch out for that. Especially the Russian player, because Russia is only protected because of his attrition, and Despot does, does, just nullifies all that. Oh man, if you look at Mouse's technology too, he's got a crazy build here. He's gone Commerce, Mill, Mill 2, Skip Civic, Skip Science, and he went Age 2. Oh, so yeah. this is literally the fastest most aggressive build you could possibly do. He even said in the chat, he said, why did you go science? Uh, he said that to TNT. So obviously, yeah. this is this I is extremely that. aggressive. Yeah. I feel if he, he, because these guys have to kill a coin as soon as possible. Yeah, they know that coin is weak. They know he's got Russians and they know that he was raided early on. So, you know, the longer they take, the less chance they'll have. And looks like there's a, there's a, there's a small uh, tussle going on between Timeless and TNO in the chats. They're fighting for metal mines because apparently Purple has got only one and he just stole one from uh, TNO and TNO has to move far away for his mines. Yeah, that's really giving me flashbacks right now to um, old Nomad games where you play with um, FC, XC Balba, the Nomad. Uh, he's the kind of guy that would quit the game as soon as you build a mine on his mine, apparently. Oh, and so, uh, what, what's that guy again? Uh, Exi Bal Exi Balwa Nomad. Um, he played by a few different names though. You probably would have played against him, but um, yeah, I haven't seen him on for a while. But he was one of those guys that just quits the game at the smallest thing. Like you might take his ruin accidentally, and oh, he'd be like, "That was my ruin. Oh my god." I'm I would. Quit. I would never want to play against him. And yeah, here uh, TNT is going for despotism as well. He's getting a stable. He said you can send it, but um, I, I, I don't think so. Uh, if these guys want to finish first, they better all go to uh, spot. And it's funny that uh, the players that we were expecting to go to spot did not go to spot. Both uh, the French and German players are going for Republic. Uh, it, it, so they're not making the best use out of their civilizations as we were expecting. And Surge is already yeah. moving a lot. It looks like Surge might be able to hold on his own easily at this point. They, they were given enough time. I mean, he's doing the right things. He's building a lot of um, towers. His city is really compact. It's going to be really tough to take on here. Um, he's setting himself up with a nice fortress. So if anyone's going to be able to do it, uh, it's, it's definitely Surge. But I mean, yeah, there's, there's going to be big armies coming his way shortly. So uh, I think it. it Probably it's going to come down to how quickly and how, how well our mouse can do here. Alright, I'll just have to pause uh, for a second. Yeah, no okay. problem, no problem. Alright, just, just give me a okay. minute. So while well, we'll give uh, Jitsin a second, because obviously uh, there is real life things on, <laughs> on at the moment as well. Um, as much as Rise of Nations is definitely the most uh, important thing for, for everyone watching this right now. But um, in the meantime, I'll just have a look at, I guess, you know, the graphs and, and talk about where this match is at at the moment from a, an overall perspective. So I think the storyline really is going to come down to two things here. Firstly, how well um, Surge can defend here with Koreans, because having that Colossus, as I said before, is, is a massive carrot. And I suspect that, you know, with with um, the French player and the German player basically about to, to double that, um, it, it's really going to come down to how well Serge can defend there and, you know, hold them off and give his teammates the chance to triple on the other side. And at the same time, you've got Mouse going despot and you've also got Spain and uh, TNT going despot as well. But at the moment, to be honest, Russia's not in such a bad position. Russia's already got 100 food, 100 wood. 60 metal and 86 wealth. So 
whilst Russia was slowed down early on in the match, it's not as bad as it could have been. And the fact that these guys have gone despot here really does mean that if they don't make something happen quite quickly, the PLA guys are probably going to fall behind. So for them, I would say that their benchmark would be they really need to try and win, um, you know, take out Moscow or take out one of these cities by the next two or three minutes of the game, or else they're going to be kind of on the back foot. लूँ मेरे स्ट्रीम पे चल रहा है प्लीज ये सब नहीं करो मेरे को नहीं पढ़ो पढ़ते स्ट्रीम पे मैं बंद कर दूँगी अभी जाके आज रात को मेरे साथ नहीं सोना मैं सीरियस हूँ You'd have to, I think, Boo, you'd have to donate some serious cash to uh, to the stream before you're going to hear You Never Walk Alone uh, on this stream. But um, if anyone does have any suggestions for uh, some, some music, please let me know and uh, we'll see if we can put it on. <laughs> and guys, anyone that's wondering what's going on, it's just um, Jitin's just got to quickly sort some things out personally. Um, just at his house. I think they, you know, like anything, these games, these games have been so good, but um, he's still got a life to deal with as well. So, <laughs> and yeah, I think I just saw in the chat, someone did say that he is taking a life and death, uh, life and death risk right now. Um, I'm sure anyone that's, uh, that can understand Hindi, if you can please translate for us, um, I can read that out in, um, on the stream. So, so let us know exactly what what that was because uh, I, I sure as hell I, I have no idea about my Hindi, but it sounded something like, uh, you know, I could try and translate. I'd say, "Hey, Jitin, man, you've been on this Resonations game for uh, for five hours now. When are you when are you going to eat? When are you going to to have a normal life?" And and you know, you're just going to turn around and say, "Hey, this is Nomadium semi-finals here, PLA versus Full Valley." <laughs> we need to uh, we need to put priorities in perspective here. So, um, all right. So, guys, just so you know, I've just um, Jutin just messaged me there. He just said he needs five minutes. So, apologies for the delay, but I will just need to um, we'll just need to to tie this over for a few minutes. So, I'm keen to hear from the chat here, guys. Please let me know your thoughts. Any any questions? Let's do a Q and A here. Um, any thoughts, comments, um, we can discuss about where this match is at the moment, um, and let's hope that uh, let's hope that that, that Jatin's relationship will be fine moving forward. I believe it's his roommate, but um, it did sound like yeah, it, it could have been. Um, it was definitely a female voice, so so let's. Um, I'm not sure exactly who it was. Um, so guys, in the chat, please let me know um, what's your thoughts as far as. You know the uh, the first the first game and the second game um, on Aussie Outback. Do you think history is going to repeat itself, or do you feel like um, you know this map is set up a little bit differently as far as you know? Uh, obviously, in that first game we saw huge boom games. We saw Colossus early on, whereas this is quite a unique one. We've got Koreans quite isolated with Colossus this time instead of instead of timeless here, um, and at the same time. We've got PLA going for Despot for the first time, um, I believe, on Aussie Outback in this series. So they can't really boom in the long term yet. <laughs> there is speculation that it must be uh, Jatin's girlfriend in the uh, in the chat, and we don't know. But I'm sure anyone that's um, that has has you know had a, a girlfriend, partner, roommate. Um, obviously, there's times where all of us can relate to being under pressure and um, wanting to make sure that you keep everyone happy because you know what they say, happy wife, happy life, or in this case, happy roommate, happy life. I'm not sure exactly what the situation is, but there's other people to keep happy. So that's why we had this uh, this brief pause. It looks like Jatin might be back now, um, but I'll, I'll just wait to make sure that he's set up first thing.
I know that you can definitely, hey, um, Jitin, I'm not sure if you can hear me or not, but we can see that the screen's moving. So it sounds like there's someone on your computer. I hope that's you, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I think um, Spiridon brought up a good point. He did say that you know this is a good opportunity for Four Valley to really show them that they actually can play this map as well. And I felt like <laughs> uh, Irash just brought up another another nugget of a comment right there. I think his mother is beating him and it's shaking his mouth. But let's let's hope that's not the case because. Um, we could be witnessing a murder right now on stream, and the only thing we can see is the Rise of Nation screen moving around. This is going to be an, an epic uh, real crime TV series one day. Hello guys, I'm sorry for the delay. I am back and let's continue. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So, so if, I'm if at here, uh, light blue, blue and green, all of these are here together. And Mouse has risked everything when he went for that uh, despot. So it, it, a triple is the last thing he needs and he is getting a triple. Oh my God, really bad support from Orange here. It does look like you know when you when you do have despots like that, you do need to kind of make it happen ASAP, and everyone should go despot at the same time. So, um, but Mouse does have a big army here. Uh, but the, but, I, I, but I don't I don't think so compared to look at what Zen Mechanics has. Yeah, very true. I mean, it, oh wow, there's three three decent sized armies holding holding the one there for Mouse, and. Yeah, it's just looking really good for, for Bali for sure. I would say this is what this was a pretty bad decision from TNO and Timeless. Both of these guys, I mean, I I think they're just stuck in st stuck in their thinking. What should we do? We are we are already too late for a rush, and we have to rush right now because the other side is losing. And same thing for Orange. Orange is like he doesn't have enough army for a raid, and he does not have enough economy to get his boom going. Yeah, wow. And um, yeah, this is this is looking like a bit of a um, yeah misstep here from PLA. But yeah, it was a big blunder. And look at that. Uh, <laughs> look at that. What Surge is doing. Surge is coming with everything he has. That's going to he's going to take DNO's cap. I, I can't oh, believe wow. this is what we are seeing. Oh my god. BLA blew such a good chance there. Wow. And, that is uh... and, I mean, he's... Oh man. Oh man. So bad. Oh man. That's some um, great move there by Surge. But, jeez, that's, um, yeah, a tough one. They probably should have seen that coming, I guess, given that he's got Colossus. And he's so close there, and obviously the militia rush was always a threat. But um, yeah, well played. You know, once you get that cap sack um, with Korean, what I what I think it's really good move here is that uh, Surge can just basically turn all his militia into um, citizens and just start repairing it straight away. Uh, obviously, didn't need to do that. It looks like it's GG there, called by the PMA guys. Um, but yeah, wow, we we are tied at two to two. Yeah, from two zero to two two. This. Uh, this guy is well. Serge has brought them back in the game. A really, really good play. Even last game, he did really well, uh, taking Mouse's capital. And same here. I, I guess apart from Mouse, nobody, nobody in this game really had an army. And Mouse was just stuck. Like he's like, oh, I, I invested so much time and resources, and <laughs> I bet everything on 
that despotic rush and it turned out I was one versus three because even Orange did, did not have a lot of army to back him up. Oh yeah, exactly. And I mean, at the moment, yeah, it's just crazy how the first two matches were such epic, long, um, yeah, amazing games. And then they've basically lost two quick, um, two quick matches here, back to back, um, where you know they just pulled Bali. You know they they got kind of rushed in the first game, and then in this game they just kind of tried to rush. But just excellent play by Surge, um, really taking so much attention. Um, that was I got, I got a hand it to Surge. He really won this game for him. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean t Timeless and TNO they had to they had to attack early. I I I feel. I feel, I feel like it's not, it wasn't justified for the other side. These guys should have killed, especially look at Blue. Blue is out in the open. Dane has nothing uh, saving himself from a timeless. Yeah, I mean, definitely, yeah, probably some regrets there from Thomas, but um, anyway, no, it, it is what it is. And yeah, well played for Paul Valley. And I'm pretty pumped, man. We're basically back to, uh, They've gone from 0-2 down to 2-2, to and it's basically a shootout now. Next game wins, best of one. Oh yeah, and something uh, Irish pointed out that if this was a best of three, PLA would have won already. So best of five is giving them a hard time now. So let's go and get to the game number five. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready, Matt. So I'm at, um, I'm at zero second mark, so... Um, when you're ready, uh, yeah, just let me know. Count me down. Let's get straight into it. Um, somebody, somebody said that um, the quality is getting r really bad. Let Let me just quickly check. Uh, I I can see what oh, 1080p. Is everybody else able to see that? Yeah, from my end, everything looks fine. On my, um, I've just got it on my iPad at the moment. So, so far so good, but yeah, just let us know, guys. Uh, is, the, is the voice and the video quality coming fine? Because uh, what I see here, it, it looks fine for me. Yeah, I think it's just for, just make sure that you go into YouTube, change the uh, quality to 1080, or as, you know, as high as you would like it, and it should be fine, because I think sometimes it defaults to 144p, which is kind of yeah. like as if it was yeah, you can't even watch, uh, you can't even listen to songs on 144p, <laughs> or maybe you can listen to songs on 144p, I take that back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so I'm, I'm at zero seconds, um, zero second mark, so let's, let's start. Uh, I'm at three second time point. Alright, three second time point for me too, yep, so let's go. One, two, All three, right. let's go. So oh here, God. okay, this is the perfect map for the uh, final game of the semi-final. This is it. This is the one map to rule them all. The number one watering hole. This is going to be crazy. I actually, I know people have a lot of thoughts about this map, but I actually love this map. I think it's so fascinating to watch. Um, and let's firstly let's check the rares, man. We've got to see if there's any citrus or copper here because I feel like that's the first thing we've got to check out. <laughs> and he, uh, Ron said it perfectly. It's very good to watch, only to watch. It's it's never good to play on this map. No. And yeah, let's go for the rares. So um, I do not see any citrus or copper throughout the game. Ex there's only one water rare. Looks like that's uh, going to be cotton. Yeah, it does look like that, and I mean, you look at these reds, you've got silver um, next to, I believe it's Dane, so maybe the silver's going to help, you've got salt there as well, which looks like it's probably, uh, you know, right on that border between PLA and Bull Valley here, so this could end up being a fight for that salt, uh, as far as, you know, who takes an advantage in this game moving forward. Oh yeah, uh, definitely, but uh, it looks like... Uh Porwali has got the better of the rare resources. They've got silver, uh, wool, dye, cotton, and they're gonna they're gonna control sugar as well. So easily, no, no doubt, they have got the better rare resources for their team. Oh, seriously, and I, I'm just seeing in the chat right now. This is quite early in the game, but I can see the coin and uh, Serge are talking to each other, saying, basically, if we can try and fake C, so they're gonna fake as if they're gonna go all in. On the um, 
on the ocean here, on the on the pond in the middle, and then basically go for a, a nice Turkish triple here. Um, this could be really really potent, man, especially if they can get that siege out nice and quick. Yeah, and this is this is kind of unfair for PLA because again I have to point out uh, silver, sugar, dye, cotton, and possibly possibly that uh, salt so that leaves nothing for PLA that's just uh, tobacco and amber I, I wouldn't bet on these rare resources for winning a game on this map yeah I feel like um, definitely for Valley I've got a pretty good set of nations here I mean Mongols and Turks just go really well together oh, yeah, you've got, and then you've got Surges Egypt so probably gonna see a wonder come out of him at some point um, and then yeah, you've got Dutch for Dania, so Dutch is it's okay. You know, obviously being able to raid with that that early ship is good, but you know we've talked about Dutch before, and you know a bit of a mixed bag. Now, good for good for PLA that uh, the front that's going to face Turks and Mongols is French and Bantu, so they're they're going to be more equipped for this kind of battle. If the Americans or uh, Russians were here, then that would make it more difficult because these are not really good civilizations for encountering early rush. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, yeah, now has got Russians again, so yeah, a bit, bit, bit unfortunate. Uh, I'm not sure if he had he was one of the Russians last game or not, but yeah, the, it's definitely the not the first time that they've had Russians in this best of five series for sure. And yeah, I mean, so I with like, sugar and with um, and with wool, sorry, sugar, sugar and cotton. Um, that's going to be a potent combination. All right, just a second. I have somebody in the room. Okay, I'll leave. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Good. Good. All right, so we'll give you to in a second. Obviously, uh, I believe he does that. Uh, visitors at the moment. So that's the commitment that Jitin has right now, is to making sure that we can cast these games, despite the fact that there's a million. All right, all right. Yeah, thanks, Ron, for holding. Yeah. No problem, no problem. Yep, yeah, we are here. Okay, all right. So, yeah, let's begin. Yeah. So here we've got uh, DNO, and if you, if you just see the difference between DNO and mechanics and mechanics here, the civilization strength is comparatively so slow against Mongols. Uh, here, the Zen mechanics is already getting a market while uh, DNO is just getting his library up. Oh, exactly. I mean, and it really does come down to how much, you know, especially how much wood you can get early on. Those woodcutter camps are so important, and you can see that Zen has 80 wood in his first woodcutter camp. And you compare that to, I mean, French isn't too bad. He's got, it looks bad, but he's actually got, because French get an extra woodcutter on each um, on each camp they build, he's got six as well, which, as long as you've got six, I feel like I'm pretty happy in the early game. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, I, I think the Dane just pointed out Saul, so he knows he has to cover that as well. Uh, I just I just heard Serge say, talk about a triple. Do you think we're going to see a triple in this? final final game I mean I think this is probably the game to do it on because after the first four games there hasn't been anything too crazy as far as um, strategies go and I feel like this is a good opportunity for them to to really pull out something you know a little bit more crazy but a little bit more teamwork oriented especially when you got Turkish there to basically reduce the cities really quickly go for a quick kind of cap sack and um, yeah maybe even try and finish the game early just like they did in game three and game four okay and that seems to be the better option for them uh look here um zen mechanics is already going for extra military it's going it's going to be very bad for a, a tno here who is not i don't i don't think he he's ready to face that um a, a military attack on land already yeah, i agree i mean I'm fascinated to see how these guys go with the, um, the water too. I mean, who really takes the bull by the horns and just goes for as many military ships as possible versus who goes for the land attack? And it looks like Zen is definitely favoring the land attack right now, and that could be pretty uh, devastating. Because right. if you look at just, just, look just at a second, boys, just a second, I would like to yeah. uh, take time for Dark Maze. Thank you for donating. Uh, it's I really appreciate it. Yep, let's continue. 
I'm sorry, I just like yeah. appreciate the donations whenever they come in. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, guys. And yeah, thank you for the donation because um, it's really indirectly providing a great incentive for us to keep um, you know, producing content like this. So thank you. Um, so yeah, I think um, we'll see how Zen goes here. But Zen's going for you know, quite an early land raid here. And I guess they don't really know what res um, PLA have at this point in time. But if they could see the whole map, they would realize that they actually don't have that many rares that, that are really that that beneficial in the long term here. I mean, they've, as you said before, they've only got tobacco and amber by the looks of it, and possibly uh, wine as well. And, and wine will be handy, but it definitely doesn't compare to having sugar, um, cotton, and dye. Oh, yeah, right. Dye and still these guys don't even know what salt, so it's not like they can fight over it. They, so if... if uh, if Mouse knew about salt, I'm sure he would have built his city in front. Oh, exactly. I mean, it's always yeah tough when you rush it, but at the same time, I'm guessing, yeah, he would have definitely built over that salt there and basically secured that. And that also might have had the benefit of, you know, getting a bit more of that territory close to that water. Um, but yeah, look, it's, it's obviously too late now to, um, to go back and build his city again. But... Maybe that was a little bit of um, of being conservative there, playing against Russia. Russia a bit slower. He just didn't want to build his city too close. Oh, yeah. And it, it just again pointing out, look at that. We are seeing a similar a similar kind of um, game that we saw last time between French and British. And this is the same team. Remember Zen Mechanics and oh no, it's not the same team actually. Zen Mechanics and Coins. Zen Mechanics is taking the initial toll of going military first and keeping the opponents busy. He's raiding both French and the Bantu players. Meanwhile, here uh, Coin is taking his time to get the second military up, and I guess he's going to start attacking at the moment he ages. So this is a perfect combo. The, the, both of the players don't need to a rush on the attack only one player uh, starts building up pressure while the other person prepares for the massive the main <laughs> the main movie instead of this trailer oh exactly right yeah and i mean they're doing really a really good job so far i mean coin has gone for military too um, for h2 so i mean we probably would have expected it anyway but definitely some serious uh, siege coming out from coin soon and i think to be honest, I think that's probably going to decide a big part of this game as far as, you know, if it does go on for the long term or if it ends early based on, you know, what coin does and how they kind of use those siege to their advantage. Oh, yeah. So, the coin is going to be aging very soon. And look at that. Tieno is getting his city right in front. I would not... I would be apprehensive of that if I was against Mongols and, and Turks. Not the best yeah. ideas of all. No, I, I completely agree. I mean, it's just incredibly risky to do that, given that you know that you can be sieged so easily by Turks and Mongols are so fast. Um, that yeah, this this may be a, a kind of questionable move. Um, it's always good to build towards your opponent if you can to get territory, but when you're up against Mongols and Turks, uh, yeah, it can be you're playing with fire a bit. Oh yeah, and this is also the combo like the timeless and TNT. We, uh, oh no, it's actually timeless and TNO. So it's not it's not the combo that we have we saw struggle in the early game. Remember in the first in the first and second games where timeless and TNO they they had a, oh no TNT had a hard time surviving. So it's not the same combo. So I won't say that. But still, the coin and Zen mechanics they're doing such a great job at keeping pressure. I mean, I wouldn't want to be TNO at this time. He's so he his eco is messed up. He cannot use that woodcutter camp, and on top of that, he's against Turks and Mongols. Yeah, I mean, a lot of great pressure here. Who've got sugar, cotton, and silver? This can this could not get worse. The, the only the only way this could get worse is if. Uh, these guys also had uh, uh, horses. Oh, exactly. I mean, you can see that all the momentum is going. Oh, the siege workshop's already up too. So you can see that Paris, um, the capital of of TNO, is is already getting sieged, and he he can't really do anything. He said in the chat, he said, "Holy shit!" And you know what? Here. This is this is such a bad decision. Uh, look at that. 
A timeless has committed on water. He should not be committing on water. He should he should know that they're against Turks and Mongols. Why why would he go all out on water? Yeah. Oh, that's rough, man. That's rough. But this is looking really good for um for four valley guys at the bottom here. It looks like Zen is going to be charging in, and Coin for some reason he stopped his siege um, from attacking the capital. So that's bought a bit more time for a TNO to maybe get a tower up. But um, you can see Mouse in the chat saying, "Don't go science, guys. Don't go science." Oh, okay. yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I can understand. Mouse is so frustrated, Lightning, right now. Last game they messed up because of because because uh, I I guess it was TNT who went science instead of extra extra military, and this game is happening. It, it, it's the same story. Oh, seriously. Um, he does get the tower up now, so it does look like. Yeah, they they might be able to hold, but um, yeah, a lot of pressure, and you know, obviously, timeless here with his second city is well and truly going to go down by the looks of it. They just can't rotate enough troops back to consider saving it. And I, as Ira said, getting seeds before you age is never a good sign. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, Tiano cannot even move his cap right now. If he moves his cap to this. Uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce that name, but if he moves its cap here, this is even more vulnerable than Paris. Oh, exactly. I mean, Le Havre, I'm going to go with that. We'll have to get coined to uh, correct us, given he's the, the resident Frenchman here. But, um, yeah, I think, as you said, oh, it doesn't like um, Yellow's moved the capital back to a little bit further behind, which is a good move. But, yeah, this is really, really bad for um, Holy those guys. Shit, Mongol look at that. It's a triple surge is here as well. Oh with wow! A, with a what despot. This is oh, a last move by Forwali. This is the, this is uh, the kind of game we want to see in the finals. Oh, exactly. I mean, brilliant strategy here. I mean, just basically letting Dane kind of hold the top and then coming through with this triple and a despot of that with uh, with Egypt of all nations, probably the last nation I would have expected a despot from. And you can see the militia pull here from from uh, from Green. Coins bringing all these. I don't know if it's all his militia, but he's bringing a lot of militia. Oh, wow. oh yeah, that's around six militia. This, this does not look good. Mouse is like, I can't even help in this game because he he was just wasn't planning on the strategy. Look, he is still going with a senator. I think he he just he just backed out. He's like, okay, I'm not going to make much difference. Yeah, I mean, and he's playing as Russians too, so. He must be frustrated because he can't really do a lot. Um, he's already a slower nation as it is. And you can see the PLA guys, oh God, for game five, they must be thinking, oh, we've got to do whatever we can to try and get back into this. But when you've got Mongols um, and Turks kind of rampaging down on you, and then you've got Egypt as a despot helping out, there's not a lot that they can really do here. Oh, yeah. And, it, oh my God, I, 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 I mean, okay, of course, as we said, there was a lot of mistakes made by PLA going heavy on water when you know you're against uh, s such strong nations it was it was it was just uh, i i won't i won't expect th these kind of mistakes to be made in early in in semi-finals yeah i mean it, it was it was a nice kind of deception move by full valley i think they basically faked that they were going to fight hard on the water but then in reality um went for a really really fast land attack here i mean we're only at the 15 minute mark uh, roughly speaking, and we're already seeing mass carnage on land. Normally that doesn't quite happen until 16, 17, 18 minutes into the game. Oh yeah, and they, I mean, Forwali might have broken the AZ's record, which I think your team holds actually for the quickest <laughs> wipeout ever. That was a, that was 14, <laughs> 14 minutes, uh, 30 seconds, I think. So Forwali almost beat you guys at it, but they're, they're a few minutes, going to be a few minutes late for it. I don't see how this triple, uh, how yellow is going to survive this triple. There's no way. Yeah, it looks like yellow's capital is under heavy, heavy pressure here. Oh yeah. And that's it. Timeless is taken. Meanwhile, um, a good thing by Dane. Dane is going for an attack. He went uh, despot. I I can't believe that. And look look at that. Dane is going all in. He's getting his militia he knows mouse is probably not here 
because mouse cannot afford to be here. Yeah, exactly. And mouse is forced to come back because mouse doesn't want to lose his capital either. And yeah, I mean, Dane doing a great job putting the pressure on. Uh, it looks like all those militia are going to come for a big push. And I guess it's, it's pretty much clear now PLA has PLA has done a good job whenever they the game uh, was drawn uh, there was a drawn out battle but in the short term PLA is just not as good at for Wally. Oh my god, you can see all these uh, militia pulled by Danius against Russia here, probably a bit of a uh, blunder bringing uh, all this nutrition because oh, yeah. nutrition man. That's right, that's right, yeah, getting militia to Russian territory when it's not a clear win. Not the best idea. He may still be able to take that cap though. But not thanks to his militia. It, if he takes the cap, it's going to be because of the unit. Yeah, exactly right. Oh, and, um, and as you that's can see. It. That's a clean sweep by these guys for Wally winning on both the fronts. Oh my god. This is a reverse sweep by for Wally. The first reverse sweep. I believe in Rise of Nations history, yeah. or at least in a best of five. <laughs> this is the first. Oh my God! I I can't believe PLA won. Uh, I mean, lost this one. How? They had clear. They had clear victories in the first two games. They have surprised everybody who is watching this stream, including including you and myself here. Oh my God! I'm I'm still in shock. Yeah, I thought. I thought you know for Valley had such a good team coming into this, but PLA played so well in game one and game two. I just thought they have to kind of go on and win just one more one more match and they sealed the deal. They're sent through to the very first grand final in Nomadium history. But obviously Four Valley had other ideas. They said, no PLA, it's not going to be that easy. This is a best of five. You still need to win one more game. And they managed to do back to back to back wins here. And I'd say they're all relatively aggressive um, and quite unique strategies. I mean. Just um, obviously in this game, that triple was brilliant. Um, in the fourth game, uh, you know, Serge just moved with Koreans there. Um, yeah, absolutely tip my hat to that. And, you know, it's just a, a classic case of, you know, economic versus military. Um, this game just continues to surprise. And, yeah, very well played to Four Valley, exceptionally well played to PLA too. Those guys have got to be super proud of how they've, they've uh, performed tonight. And, man, I'm speechless, man. I don't know what else to say. And then as quickly, just like this a quick time to uh, analyze what PLA did wrong in the third, fourth, and fifth game. So I guess third game was the Himalayas, right? Yeah, I think the third game. No, the third game was the one. Yeah, on Himalayas. That's correct. Yep. So, so that in, was the. In the third game, I guess uh, Mouse did not receive a lot of help from Anto, or maybe not as much as uh, the Zen mechanic received from Surge. So uh, those guys took their own side. So it uh, the, the third game was solely like I mean, Surge and Zen won their side, and that's how the game ended. It's not, it, it wasn't like both the sides were winning. So yeah, third game was pretty much uh, pretty much uh, close for some time, but then these guys got it. And I w I won't say of course Angelo could have done better, but there was no blatant mistake that I could point out on that side. No, exactly. I mean, what, what yeah. Do you think about looks, the fourth game. Oh yeah, please continue. I'm sorry. So, so in the fourth game, I feel like the fourth game was, you know, PLA. They've already won twice on Aussie Outback, and in that fourth game, they decided to do things a bit differently. They didn't kind of set up their cities in the same way that they normally would. So they're already kind of probably a bit thrown off by the fact that Surge built his city so close. It kind of separated things and um, disrupted their natural game style. And I feel like from that point forward. Obviously, um, they went for a bit of a different strategy, an early raid, and then Mouse was going to go for Despot. But, you know, Full Valley, you got to give full credit to them. They counted it perfectly. They had three armies waiting to kill one Despot army um, when Mouse tried to go in. And that was just a brilliant shutdown. And then on the other side of the map, Surge uh, somehow just pulls this massive militia pull and uh, takes that capital. So, yeah, it was great play. And um, it just proves that, you know, you don't have to play for an hour game. Uh, you know, if you win in 15 minutes, it counts the same as if you win over an hour, and they all uh, they all work out to be the same in the best of five here. Oh yeah, and uh, for the fourth game, I would also say that PLA, PLA was not as versatile as Forwali. So Forwali it boomed in the first two games, and when they knew they had to boom, and they attacked when or defended when they knew they had to. 
PLA played with the same game style um, as the second game and they were also out of sync remember uh, PLA played really well in the first two all the players were coordinating they were doing the same thing as each other they were helping each other out but in the fourth game they got uh, their coordination was lacking a lot because here on one side mouse was ready for a quick attack while uh, TNO, TNT was not and on the other side timeless and uh, uh, TNO were not re were not uh, willing to go for a fast attack either, so that inflexibility cost them the game. I, I mean, that's what I believe. Oh, I, I completely agree. And um, I'm just looking in the chat right now. I can see there's people across the world um, absolutely pumped up by this reverse sweep here by Fulbali and the excellent games we've seen tonight. It sounds like it's about 6 a.m., uh, 5 a.m., 4 a.m., depending on where you are. I'm guessing everyone that's in Europe right now. It's probably the worst, uh, the worst time of the night to be watching these. But thank you for the uh, support and dedication to be still on to uh, to find out. Um, obviously, for those that went to bed, uh, hopefully you'll watch this back um, later on in the day on, on the YouTube uh, video on demand. But yeah, it's awesome to see such a huge uh, support and continue coming out to watch these uh, excellent matches tonight. Oh yeah, yeah I still, I, I still. Uh, I'm digesting the fact that PLA lost this after a 2-0 in the beginning. This was so crazy. Oh. This was, this ha, ha, no doubt this was the craziest game we have seen all this tournament. It's just what I would expect from a semi-final. Oh, exactly. It, it pretty much had everything. So, well, and, and 4v4, it's the first time we've seen 4v4s. We saw three 4v4s in a row. Um, that was crazy, man. It's, it's a different dynamic, but uh, still made for some really epic matches. And to be honest, for me, I think, to be honest, like game, game one and game two were, were both epic. Game one was probably the most epic match of this entire tournament. Oh, yeah. Um, just, in, just in the sheer back and forth, that was insane. And that will uh, be a, a great memory for the PLA guys. I mean, obviously, PLA played great, and it's got to hurt for them to, uh, to crash out of the tournament in this manner, but at the same time, we have to remember that we will see PLA play again, so they will uh, fall down to the third and fourth place match where there will be money on the line, so there's a lot to play for still, um, and we don't know who they'll play against yet because that leads us into, I guess, the upcoming semi-final for the other half of the bracket. Oh, yeah. And just, again, something I want to point out here, uh, so if you remember, PLA has given Forwali a very tough time. Forwali had to play all their cards in these in the third, fourth, and fifth games. They were not holding back at all. They were actually uh, kind of worried that uh, PLA has got them. Uh, I mean, P P PLA did get them by surprise. I, I don't think Forwali were expecting such a nice play by PLA. And if you remember, uh, who played PLA in the quarterfinals? Do you remember that? Or maybe uh, uh, the actually the pre preliminary rounds. I believe that was. Uh, I'm trying to go back. Uh, it was a few weeks ago now. But was it versus the Lat or was it AZ? It was against it was, AZ2. Um, and if you remember, AZ2. AZ2 did win a game against PLA. Yeah, exactly. They won. And I mean, that was when Ayuzaki, um, Nakakazu, and etc. And Timeless made a big mistake, I believe, in that game where he built his city, um, he went Civ 2 against Turkish, which never works out well. And you can see in this game, Turkish was uh, PLA's downfall as well. So it seems like Turkish might be uh, the uh, Achilles heel of, uh, of PLA. Oh yeah, and I would also point, would like to point out that AZ2 was an amazing team. So yeah, AZ2 did a great job, and I would I would say that if they weren't against PLA, if they were against any other uh, competitors in the uh, preliminaries that did not make it to the semifinals right now they might have had a, have an even better chance right now so just something if you're a, a player from AZ2 or an AZ2 fan remember these guys played really well in the prelim, uh, preliminaries and I would like to see that team come back again in the next tournament and show us what they've got yeah absolutely no I agree and um, wow I don't know I guess where do we go from here so the that was such an incredible semi-final um, it's it set a very high bar, but we do have another really exciting match coming up soon. Um, so do you want to tell us a bit about what we can expect in the other semi-final? So the next semi-final is uh, TGZ versus L. And we, I, I cannot cast right now because it's, it's late here and I have to sleep. But tomorrow at 6 a.m. EST, 
which is going to be which is going to work out great for people in the uh, ar- around Europe or the eastern hemisphere and a little early for the people in the west but that's the time that works for me and it works for Kron as well so we're going to be coming back with the EL versus DC stream tomorrow 7 uh, or 6 a.m. Um, EST that that is about 7 hours from now yeah 7 hours from now so wherever you are in the world just think if you need to sleep human beings can get by on you know 6 hours sleep so go to bed now wake up in 6 hours time and we'll, you'll be live to see the EL versus TGZ the other semi final so we'll be bringing that one to you um, just as we have with this match and uh, yeah based on the quality of those games you do not want to miss that one as well so set the alarms for seven hours from now. We'll be going live. Um, it's obviously getting late in um, uh, where you are right now, Nitin. So I understand you probably have to uh, go to bed yourself. Is that right? Oh yes, I have to sleep so I can wake up for the uh, next stream. Oh exactly. And I mean, if we had more time, like uh, we'd love to do post-match interviews, but we probably, am I fair to say, probably don't have a chance at the moment. Just Actually, I, I do have football. some time for post-match interview if any of the Forwali or PLA players are online right now and would like to come for it. Yeah, it's a, I think um, it's always a highlight for me. So make sure, given it's obviously late, um, please message us ASAP if um, if you know any of the guys, PLA or Forwali, are watching this right now. We'd love to hear from Zen if he's around or, um, or anyone, to be honest, from... Uh, from either team just to, to talk us through what they were thinking um, but please yeah obviously message us ASAP so that we can get straight on with it yeah and we're going to be here for five more minutes uh, uh, waiting for any 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 uh, messages from these players um, thanks James Doherty for your support for, for that it really means a lot we want to continue doing this and I really I really enjoy casting Rise of Nations so yeah oh man it's been good it looks like um, all the people that were staying up late in Europe right now, uh, I can see that the viewership is starting to drop off as they're probably going to bed as well. So um, hopefully it will be nice though if, um, yeah, if, if there is anyone from Fort Bali especially that's on. But yeah, I guess um, should we just wait a few minutes and then if they, if they are, we'll jump back on the stream and, and if not, we'll, um, we'll see how we go. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, and it looks like James is uh, actually boo. Hey, Boo. I, I, I think Boo had his own account that says L Boo. What do you do with that account? No, I think it, it's just like Boo, what he does everywhere. He's smurfing, man. He's always trying to smurf as uh, James Doherty. I think that's his secret smurf name. Um, but uh, no, I think it's, it's YouTube as well. YouTube, when you create your account these days, it's hard to make a, a, a fake account you know, with your gaming name. So apparently he's got two accounts. Yeah, okay. It's not the first time you've had two accounts, is it, Boo? <laughs> yeah, probably not the first time. I have two accounts, all right. And probably Boo is watching from both the accounts. Yeah, exactly. And we appreciate it. It boosts up our viewership numbers. So keep going. Actually, while you're at it, can you create five more and just uh, stream them all so that we can uh, artificially inflate our account? Oh, yeah. Please do that. So uh, I guess we don't have anybody so far. And uh, j- just before we close, I would like to uh, thank everybody who's, who watched this and who donated. I put a $50 uh, donation goal and we've made 80 today. That's 160% of what was expected. So thanks a lot, guys. Uh, keep supporting the stream. Uh, Kron has got his own uh, Twitch stream, uh, e- Easy Kron HD. Uh, check that out as well. Yeah. Um- yeah, check out the stream, and guys, thanks for the donations tonight. It's much appreciated. And yeah, thanks more importantly for tuning in and uh, sharing this this um, you know set of series. I think we peaked at about I think I saw 32 viewers at one point, and honestly, that was just a reflection of how good these matches were. Um, easily the best series of the tournament so far. Um, yeah, can't wait for the game tonight. And uh, yeah, Jatin, thank you earlier as well. I know you had obviously your personal. Um, you've got people, visitors coming to your house and. Mm-hmm. And uh, it really, it really is a big sacrifice. And on behalf of everyone, we really appreciate your commitment too. In um, yeah, you know, putting some things on hold in real life to help bring us these games. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot, Ron. Yeah, it's been amazing casting with you as always. 
So I'm going to be closing the stream in next 10 minutes. Anybody who's still watching the stream can continue. After the stream is closed, it'll take about one hour to uh, consolidate the whole stream into a video. The YouTube takes its own time. So for that one hour, you may not be able to uh, see the whole stream. So just giving you a heads up, I'll keep it on for the next 10 minutes. And that that's it for me. Yep, perfect. Well, um, no worries. I think that's about time we wrap it up for now. But as we said, make sure you tune in in approximately seven hours from now at um, whatever time that is. I believe it's uh, 10 a.m. UTC from memory. Uh, hold on. I forgot my math correct. Um, so, yeah, in seven hours from now, tune in for the next... Uh, the other semifinals, TDZ versus EL. It's been awesome casting tonight. Thanks again, and uh, we will talk to you soon. Oh, yeah. And see you guys. Bye-bye.